This is Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on iTalk 106.7 FM and iTalk1067.com. Also brought to you in part by Northland Pioneer College, Ace Hardware of the White Mountains, Beamer's Glass, Dealer Orthodontics, Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tint, Comfort Fit Ventures, Summit Regional Medical Center, Horn Auto Center, and Honda Ski and Outdoor Sports. And now, Sholo Ford presents high school football on iTalk 1067 and worldwide on iTalk1067.com. Very good evening, and thank you for joining us here at St. John's High School for a big rivalry matchup. The Round Valley Elk coming in 0-1, having lost 24-6 to Morenci at home to start the season. St. John's likewise fell at Blue Ridge 38-14 as Round Valley received the opening kick and is right now facing a third and 12 after no gain on first down. And then here's a draw play that's going to Clark, going right up the gut, goes over the 40 and is gonna be flirting with a first down. It just been pushed back five yards because of a procedure flag, so that would have done it, but that's a 10 yard gain for Clark, making it fourth and short. As I'm Derek Palmer alongside Mike Granillo. Mike, what have you recognized so far? Well, you know, right now, the, the emotion right now, you know, like you said, a rivalry game. So emotions are high, so that's a big play, and, and it puts it, it makes the first big decision of the game. Round Valley decided to probably go for it here near midfield. I've already shown Riker Marble is a bit of a threat to run, though he didn't gain anything on it. That was a, an option play that he wound up handing off. This time he's going to again give it away as Clark fumbles the football. There's nothing but Redskins. It's a, it's a first down if Round Valley comes up with it, but no. And it's a turnover. Well, and that's the... That's the risk you take when you run that option. And I tell you what, Marble held it in there as long as he possibly could. It kind of felt like he wanted to take it, uh, but ball carrier Rabin, I'm sorry, the Clark Clark was the ball carrier and he, he was holding on to it and uh, caused it to get free. So it was shaping up to be a turnover on downs anyway. And St. John's which uh, had its kickoff go out of bounds. The Redskins are now coming in Round Valley territory to start this first possession. There's no score, nine minutes and 39 seconds to play in the first quarter. This first possession for St. John's as they got two receivers on either side. And I, Wilt Bank playing the quarterback as he hands it off and is met by a couple of tacklers. Who's that? I think we're going to see a marked difference here for St. John's tonight, Derek. Uh, their second game, they're going to have learned a lot. The learning curve is high right now for these St. John's players under new coach, uh, Lon Dimbat. You know, they haven't had a, a full spring program, a full summer program. And so I think we're going to see a lot different uh, St. John's team than we saw at Blue Ridge last week. That was Mark Cox on the carry. Just got one yard. So second down and long. Empty backfield for Wiltbank now as he sends a man in motion going left to right. That's going to be Cy Lindsay. But now he's got split backs on either side of him. Winds up handed off. Raven, he bounces out on the outside and is going to be brought down from behind. Nice open field tackle there by Jeff Cochran. Tell you what, though, not a bad little run by Raven. Uh, I think he, the hole closed up and he bounced it to the outside pretty well. And so now at least it puts St. John's in a somewhat manageable third down situation. Now, uh, Lindsey, excuse me, uh, Wilbank not going to throw it a whole lot, uh, but he will run it. And they've kind of maybe set that up because he's given it a few times. Look for Wilbank to maybe pull this one and try to keep it. Or he might go to his favorite target, Michael Bushman, maybe in a quick flat out route. Uh, to the far sideline. What, where's the importance for round value if you know that the quarterback is inclined to try well, to keep it on the ground? Yeah, you're going to put eight in the box, and you're going to come up hard and fill gaps, so play action might hurt the linebackers. So start with five receivers, and now flag comes out. Ooh, that might have taken too much time. That's, so as that happened with Round Valley, they're facing a mid-range third down play and now five yards pushing back. Yeah, and you know, but St. John's is probably in four down territory here. They're in Round Valley territory, so if they can pick up half the distance, maybe six, seven yards right here, that should put them in a position to go for it on fourth down. Cox again goes out, making it trips to the right side, now in motion back into the backfield. 
Little pistol formation as Rabin goes in motion left to right. Now, Ooh, yep. well, they don't think this one's going to count as this one is going to be dislodged going toward Rabin on the far side. But a flag came out when Wilt Bank was losing his footing waiting for the snap. Well, they tried to get Michael Bushman to clear out that side right there, and they run Rabin un underneath. The problem is Rabin was the man in motion, and he took off, off upfield a little early. Ah. So it was third and 11. I think they're asking right now if the Elk want to yeah, tack another five on they, it. They might, uh, you know, you probably figure if you're round value that St. John's going to go for it either way. So you might as well get as many yards as you can. Interestingly enough right there, uh, Will Bank not under a lot of pressure on that pass play. But they are going to decline it. So Round Valley declines the penalty, make it fourth and 11. <laughs> Brent, scoreboard operator assumed they were going to take that penalty. <laughs> you know what they say about assuming. Uh -huh. Wilt Bank hands this one off Raven, who's going to be brought down in the backfield. A big stop there for the Elk after they Fumble it on their first possession. Now get a turnover on downs after Rabin is caught for a short loss. Huge Cochran play. was there with the big stop. Yeah, by him and Gavin Pettit in there as well. And you can see on this replay right here, uh, Pettit comes in from behind. I'm sorry, I think it is Cochran. I can't, I can't tell. It is Gavin Pettit. Just comes in from behind and gets the shoestrings of Rabin. Now the Elk had a hard time getting the offense going. Had the one big run there on the option play to Clark. But otherwise couldn't move the chains and wound up fumbling it away. So this feels like a, a big opportunity as Round Valley will now start in St. John's territory after getting that turnover on downs. Marble gives way to Clark, goes right up the middle, and he's over the 45 for a pretty good gain of five. Well, on paper, Round Valley should have the advantage, especially in the trenches. Their linemen uh, considerably heavier than the St. John's guys, and St. John's has a small team. They got a lot of guys that go both ways, uh, so it's going to be a long night, perhaps, for the linemen for St. John's. They're going to have to hunker down a little bit more because if you give up five, six yards a play, uh, you're going to be on your goal line here pretty quick. It's really interesting, Marble, who's shown so many ways he could beat defenses, both with his arm and his feet. But right now, he's only been responsible for two plays in and of himself. Completed his only pass for three yards and rushed for no gain. Now facing second down and five. So playbook's wide open. He's going to start this one. Keep it. Cuts it up. He's got a first down as he bounces it on the outside and eventually is brought down at the 35-yard line. Gain of nine and a comfort fit denture first down. Well, I'll tell you what. Nice job. Uh, Cy Lindsay in there on the tackle eventually. But great job by Marble as you just on cue. Derek, uh, showing what he could do with his legs. You would like to see Kyle Clark perhaps stay and keep that angle as the pitch man. He kind of abandoned the pitch, and I think uh, Marble could have gone to him a little farther down the field. First and 10 with six minutes and 40 seconds to play. First quarter, no score. Second possession for the Elk as they've been keeping it on the ground an awful lot. With Clark right now on the left of Marble. He gets the call. Goes up the middle, and he's got a big hole as he runs for about 10 yards and is close to another comfort fit denture first down. I'll tell you what, the left side of that line, Derek, I think you could have run through that hole. Uh, maybe wouldn't have picked up quite as many yards, but yeah. So great job if you, as you watch that nice little trap as the tight end comes in, pulls up inside there, and creates a nice running lane for Kyle Clark, uh, who, like you said, just been getting it done. You know, Marble, new quarterback, not even listed as a quarterback on the roster, is doing a great job. He didn't start last week. Brett Jordan got the start, but he's got his team now at the 25 near the red zone. Clark on his right. High snap brought down. Handoff Clark trying to find another bit of room up the middle, and he's able to bounce off a couple of tacklers and wind up getting a little bit of forward momentum down for a two-yard gain. Jackson Greer there with another stop. He's been everywhere yeah. here in the first quarter yeah. for the Redskins. Jackson Greer doing what he can to help his teammates out. Uh, the six foot, six foot one senior doing a great job on the defensive end. But right now, that Round Valley front five, they're just getting great push right now. I think St. John's is trying to, to see into the backfield and see what they can do, and they're exposing their chest, and that's just what Round Valley wants. They're getting up in there and driving them back five yards. Gage Baker now moves into the backfield for the Elk. Two receivers off on the left, second down, eight. Started just over the 50-yard line in St. John's territory. He's again going to read this one, pull it back. Marble trying to go to the far side, turns the corner and gets toward the 20. 
Forced out of bounds over the 15, and is again close to a comfort fit denture first down after Sam Winters is able to track him down. Tell you what, uh, kind of an inexperienced move there by the cornerback on that side for St. John's. Uh, did not keep contained, and Riker Marble made him, made him pay. And so now that's in the mind of the St. John's guys. We've got to watch both the outside and the give. That's going to really open things up for Round Valley here, not to mention perhaps a little play-action pass off of that. That was a first down, 445 now in the first quarter. No score, but the Elk are in the red zone. Baker gets this call after another high snap. Marble's able to bring it down and get it to him, but the high snap's going to allow Jade Rabin to get in there and make the stop. Well, coming off the corner, uh, Rabin able to just be there. And, you know, uh, Gage Baker just a little slow once he got the handoff. No explosion there. That allowed Raven to come in and make that play. Unblocked, really. The hole was there in front of him, but Baker just never been able to get to it. Clark back in as the running back. He has 30 yards on five carries. Second down, they're going to say Baker didn't get to the line of scrimmage, so it's a, a short 12, I guess we can call it. And into the <laughs> neutral zone comes one of the Redskins. Leba wow. was trying to time it. He's just a sophomore. He's, he's the one who kind of got beat on that corner on the keeper uh, by Marble. So getting some good experience right here. It's early in the season. This is a tough, uh, this, this game doesn't mean a ton as far as the rest of the season for St. John's. So they got to remember there's to keep learning. This decal on the St. John's helmet is fire. It is. It is fire. Make it now second down and six after the five-yard penalty. High snap again brought down by Marble. Had this one off Clark. Goes to the right side, and he's inside the 10. Should have enough for a comfort fit denture first down, and it should be first and goal after Jackson uh, Greer makes the stop. Well, again, Jackson Greer having to do all the work, but it's 10, years, 10 yards down the field. But right there, that was the same play that Baker got stopped for a loss on Derek. But that time, Noah Dana able to pull and kick out Raven, and that's what allowed... Uh, Clark to get up inside there and make that big game. Uh, I would expect right here Mar Marble to perhaps keep this one and try to get around the end of the end zone. Still going with two receivers split wide left. Marble from the shotgun with Clark on his left. That time a good snap. Handoff oh, wow. Clark. Gaping hole over the left side. And he's got it for a Mountain Mobile Autoglass touchdown. Wow. I mean, that's just, I mean, they ran that play left. They ran that play right. Uh, just a great job blocking up front. The center, Nell Ruvalcaba up there just controlling the line of scrimmage. And you can see the great wall on that right side. And really nobody for Clark to have to combat until he was two yards in the end zone. Six-nothing, Round Valley leading with 3.09 to go. Mar Marble is going to serve as the kicker. Brett Jordan is holding. Trying to make it 7-0 after that was a 48-yard drive. All on the ground. Snap is a little bit high, but it's down. And up and good. 7-0. Round Valley with the lead. 3.09 to go. This is Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right. Not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce and at SholoFord.com. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent now has three locations to serve you. Snowflake. Lakeside, and now Sholo. And with over 85 years combined experience in auto glass and over 40 years of combined experience in window tent, you can trust the experts at Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent with your vehicle. Call them today. Just call 536 597 to Mountain Mobile Auto Glass. Cash back to you. 7-0, Round Valley leading 3.09 to go. Before we get to this Northland Pioneer College kickoff, we got some Ace Hardware keys to the game. Ace Hardware is a 24-7 lock. Gas station for the guy to free up so he can fill up your propane tank. Or worse, when the only qualified propane tech... Let's crush it. Any day or night, any night of the week, call Ace Hardware and Pine Top Overguard. And Sholo is here. The Northland Pioneer College kickoff is off of Marble's foot. 
rolling around. Bushman's going to take it at the 15. Starts running away from some tacklers back to the far sideline and gets held up at the 30. So not bad field position for the Redskins, but give me an ace hardware key to the game there. Well, right? it's right on cue, Derek, because I got to watch St. John's last week at Blue Ridge, and I think one of their most dangerous weapons is Michael Bushman. And they have to find a way to get him more involved in the offense. He's a receiver, but as we've seen already, St. John's not going to throw it a ton, but they have to. I think he's a playmaker for them. They have to find a way to get the ball in his hands. All right, that was the Ace Hardware keys to the game. Ace Hardware, 24-7 locksmith. Next time you're locked out of your car, just need a key replaced any hour of the day or night, any night of the week, call Ace Hardware in Pine Top, Overgard, and Sholo. Wilt Bank back in at quarterback with Cox standing on his left. Two receivers also coming to the near side. Two split wide right now, a man in motion. That looks to be Rabin instead. It's going to be Cox taking it over the right side. And a big run there from the Ramblin'. Ramblin' Mark Cox wears number 99, and he runs like a big dude. You, you know, you'll love to see that. Going with 99, he was probably supposed to be a lineman and has been for the last few years. But they're like, hey, you can run a little bit. So let's go ahead and put you in the backfield. And the size, the 185 pounds, helps out in high school football. And you see it right there. Second down, two. Second possession here for St. John's. Looking for the first time that they moved the chains. And now stopping play. They're going to ask. That's a uh, Luker. Yeah, Luker to leave for some reason. It might be uh, something up with his equipment. Looks like he's, they're looking at his left arm. Ah. Put, the, put the sophomore in. We'll see if the coaching staff for St. John's pays attention to that and attacks him. Brenton Walker coming out to replace him off on the right side in the secondary. Rabin going in motion this time left to right. Hand this one off Cox, tries to go up the middle. He doesn't have an awful lot, but he only needed two. Winds up with three and a comfort fit denture first down. Well, this is one of the adjustments that St. John's has made so far this week is bringing that Raven in motion. The only problem is he hasn't practiced it a lot, obviously, because he's very, very close to turning that upfield a little early. But, but credit St. John's up front. They're, they're taking some of the momentum that they lost and trying to get it back and getting a little push in the front and running just a nice basic uh, zone read play. And Cox is doing a good job of just hitting the hole hard and getting what he can. Under two minutes to go in the first quarter, 7-0. St. John's trails, though. It has the football. As this time, Tripp's coming out to the near side. Two receivers out wide to the right. And in motion, Cy Lindsey. He's in the backfield. Fake the handoff. Wiltbank starts rolling to the right, but he's going to be picked off. Baker's got this one going out to the far sideline where he's going to be run out of bounds. And Wiltbank there. With the stop after the interception, a flag comes out, thrown all the way from the near sideline back to the middle of the field. This could uh, be anything. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a sideline warning. you got coaches all over the place over there. Show a little show a little discipline, will you? Uh, but <laughs> there you see. Spoken like a true coach yourself. Uh, I mean, it, come on. <laughs> you, uh, but great job defensively, but you can see the problems that St. John's has. Oh, they're, they're going to Personal foul. throw a 15-yard flag against Round okay. Valley. The well. flag is right now on the 38-yard line. I believe that's it? a spot foul. I'm sure that was after the interception. Yeah. So it will be Round Valley ball. but So they know, would have had it at the 30. And Will Bink was trying to find Cox on that out route. I thought they were trying to set up a screen because a couple of Round Valley defenders got through very quickly that time. And so the pressure, I think, got to Will Bank right there and forced him to just throw an errant pass. So it would have been first and 10 after the interception on the 30. The spot foul, flag was at the 38, 15 yards from there. And it's all the way back to the 47. Round Valley leading 7-0. Had a turnover on downs and then an interception. A minute and 36 seconds left here in the first quarter. And here is Marble. Getting it off to Clark. No, he's keeping this one. Trying to bounce it out. Coming to the near side. Looking for a block. Gets over the 50. Trying to cut it back inside. But he's going to be spun down by Wiltbank. They'll... It's a very long way to run to gain four. Well, I think they pretty much missed a block in the back that allowed Clark to get to the outside because let's see it right here. Oh, no, oh, he got, he got the helmet in front barely. Um, so Bushman comes up and makes a big tackle right there, but not, not as crisp as we're used to seeing Round Valley's offense, but they're starting to get some things going. Marble last year rushed for 58.7 yards a game. Already shabby. with 21. 
as they just got this one over Redskin territory and Round Valley having a hard time getting to the line of scrimmage. Going to need a timeout. Leading 7-0 with 51 seconds to play in the first quarter. This is Shola Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Arno. I might not be comfortable on the basketball court, but I promise at Comfort Fit Dentures, you'll feel comfortable always. Comfort Fit Dentures has dentures starting at $499 with payment plans, and they have two labs, meaning you get your dentures in days instead of weeks. Call Comfort Fit Dentures today to schedule a free exam and x-ray. 928-888-0002. 928-888-0002. When you think glass, think Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. Deemer's Glass offers the best selection of quality glass with affordable prices. They do full home window packages, replacement windows, Custom shower doors and enclosures, custom mirrors in many shapes, styles, and colors, glass doors and hardware, commercial glass for buildings and offices, skylights, screens, fire rated glass for your fireplace or stove, window film, and more. Visit Deemer's Glass today on Porter Mountain Road in Lakeside or call 1 888 Glassman. Who sells the number one? Hey, out, out. Brown Valley after his first time out. In St. John's territory, facing That's second down bad. and seven. Throw this one over the wide. top, wide open, and caught over the 30, and stumbling <laughs> down to the 20 is Brett Jordan. <laughs> he was quarterbacking last week. Now he has a 24-yard gain. I'll tell you what, that ball is inches away from hitting Jordan in stride, but he's so wide open. Great job by Marble just to throw some air underneath it. He just, just kind of stumbled, was able to hold on to it, but... Boy, you know, you've run, they've run 12, 13 plays in a row running the ball, and, you know, you're just going to suck that defense in and allow the receiver, Jordan, to get wide open. That's just the second pass attempt here in the first quarter, and the first since the second play from scrimmage for the Elk. Now, Ben, again in the red zone. Clark gets the call, goes up the middle. Marble's doing a great job reading this. And uh, it's getting to this, the point in the ball game where he could probably call either and yeah. uh, be doing okay. And I think they're gonna, we're going to see a, de a steady dose of running the ball the rest of this drive for Round Valley. That will be the final play of the first quarter. Round Valley once again in the red zone leading 7 nothing. Going to flip the field. We'll be back for more after this in Show Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right. Not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce and at SholoFord.com. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right, not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce and at SholoFord.com. Seven nothing here to start the second quarter. We'll kick off the second quarter. When you kick off your college education, do so at Northland Pioneer College. You'll pay the lowest tuition in the state. First time with the ball has been down in this neck of the woods. Yeah. New angle. Right on the 18, maybe the 17 yard line. As Marble this time going to keep this one. Steps away from attack with the 15, spun down over the 10, but enough for a comfort fit denture first down. It'll be first and goal for the Elk. Well, St. John's got in trouble that time because they brought a blitz up the middle, and that play designed to go off left tackle, and so nobody in the secondary to help make that tackle until he was well past uh, the second the, the line the linebackers that time. So, Round Valley's just dialing everything up, doing whatever they want right now offensively. St. John's going to have to come with a with an emotional stand right here on the goal line. Put it on the nine. First and ten. Got 46 uh, yards on eight carries for Clark, 31 on five for Marble. Both in the backfield right now. It was Clark who got it in on the last one. Another high snap, this time kept by Marble. Bounces it to the outside, looking for one block. Instead, he's going to be brought down for a very short gain. Oh, he's still on his feet, but 
He was, again, just a block away. Just a block away, Trace Whiting, the receiver the receiver out there. But really, I th I'm going to have to put the blame on Riker Marble right there. If he cuts that inside, that's where Whiting was waiting. And instead, he tried to outrun Bushman, which is going to be tough to do, and he paid the price. Got a lot of co coaches would ask their quarterback to go down a little bit sooner. A little, little sooner, but... I you know, and who's going to get a chance to look at that on film and see, oh, if I just get north and south instead of trying to go east and west, I think things are going to work out. He could have probably dove for the end zone and made it. Two receivers split wide left. Got Luker, well, as well as number four. Still going with Clark. This time he gets the call, goes up the middle, bounces out to the left side and falls over the goal line. He's got another. A Mountain Mobile Autoglass touchdown to make it 13 and nothing from nine yards out. You know, the, the linemen for Round Valley are just doing a great job, as we're going to see right here on the replay. It's a zone play, so they're just kicking out. Whichever way their lineman wants to go, that's the way they're going to go with it. And just a huge hole opened up as they were able to kick out Cox, who's been uh, one of their better defenders for St. John's. And then it was just up to Clark running hard and able to get beat the linebackers into the end zone. Got, once again, Jordan holding... Marble in to kick, looking for a 14-0 start. It's a little bit of pressure, but he's able to get this one up, away, and good. Wound up being a 53-yard drive. One big pass play of 24 yards, got about half of it. Clark punched it in again. 10.31 to go in the half, 14-0. Round Valley with the lead. It's Sheldon Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. Want to go fishing? Head to Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. They have fishing supplies, outdoor fishing attire, and fishing gear. Plus all kinds of bait including live worms, flies, and lures. The staff are experienced anglers and they can advise you on what you need, where to go, and what type of bait the fish are biting on. Plus, pick up your fishing, camping, and boat permits. When you think fishing, think Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. Located on Highway 260, one mile before the casino. Hard nosed kids. All right, Brown Valley leading 14-0, kicking off here with 10.31 to go in the second quarter. When it's time to kick off your college education, do so at Northland Pioneer College. You'll pay the lowest tuition in the state. Marble, who has thrown for 27 yards, run for 32, is going to kick this one away. Bushman and Rabin. Cy Lindsay back to receive. Bushman had a pretty good return. And when Cox was able to rumble for a first down, it looked like the Redskins were in business, but an interception derailed. Now looking for another good return. This one's going to go wow. over Bushman's head. Hello. Bounces into the end zone for a touchback. Hello. Well, had a little wind behind him. That doesn't hurt. But I don't know if it was that much. Yeah, it wasn't. I don't know either, but Marble, Marble can kick it. He's, he's done a great job. So St. John's, this is a very important drive. You got 10 and a half minutes to go. If you turn this ball over quickly and you leave a lot of time for Ram Valley, you may be looking at a 21-0 deficit. If you can't at least chew up five, six minutes on the clock and get some get some yardage, get into the Ram Valley side of the field, um, and at least make them think about it at halftime. Start this on the 20 after the touchback, trailing two touchdowns, two receivers on either side. Single man in the backfield is Cox. Bushman goes in motion behind the line to the left. Handoff goes Cox. He's got a big hole. Gets over the 25. Still on his feet to the 27. Gage Baker there with the stop, and a flag comes out late. I think we're going to have a face mask there. We'll see. But I'll tell you what. Cox did not seem, at least from my vantage point last week, that he ran with as much energy as he's running with tonight. Doing a great job of just hitting the hole hard. And even though the blocks may not be huge downfield, his momentum is carrying would-be tacklers into the backfield. Now, that was a face mask. Yep. There is. They're going to move this five yards from the spot, which is going to push it to the 33 and make it a comfort fit denture first down after the seven yards run for by Cox. He now has 19 on four carries. We'll see if they keep going with a steady diet of Cox right here. 
Man in motion this time coming to the near side is Rabin, and the handoff does go Cox. He again goes up, diving up the middle, goes over the 35 before he's stopped by Baker, gains four. I mean, that's a pretty good tackle one-on-one -on -one for Baker because there was nobody else to tackle Cox if Baker doesn't make that play. So great job by him. But now St. John's has given themselves manageable, you know, when you're not in emergency mode all the time, you can make some things happen, and they're starting to do that here. Second down, six. This one started on the 20. Moved the chains for the second time today. And now Cox, who's been the workhorse, is in the backfield with Raven again coming in motion to the near side. This time, Wiltbank wants to keep, but nobody's helping him out, and he's going to get dumped in the backfield. Connor Luker there to make it a two-yard loss. Well, receivers just got to do a better job of blocking on the perimeter. You know, that's something that you probably work on two or three times a week in practice. And I think a lot of receivers are like, eh, not that big a deal. But it really is, you know, uh, because that's the, that's the difference between a positive play and, and we see right there a negative play. You had Cox come in and put a helmet on somebody who was already absorbed. Two Round yeah. Valley players went in untouched. And it's now second down, no, third down. They're calling it nine. Overloading this side a lot. Handoff goes Cox, kind of stutter step to get over the 35, falls down at the 37, gains three, but they needed nine. Gage Baker there with the stop. I'll tell you, that is a big play by Gage Baker because if Cox gets by him, he's picking up that first down and more. And just a shoestring tackle. Baker does a good job going underneath the block, we're going to see right here, and just upends him right there. Safety might have come up and be able to make a play, but one-on-one -on -one with Cox, that would have been pretty tough. Marble's going to receive. In this punting situation. Interesting. All right, punts low and away. Marble runs oh, in on it. Yeah. Has this one fumbled oh, and picked up by Bushman. And now yeah. it's a foot race. All the way at the 20, the 10 5. Touchdown, St. John's after Marble decides to try to play it on a short hop. And has that one come off the fingertips and it's just scooped up by Bushman. I tell you what, that's amazing. It is a muff. Um, I think you can, you just can't advance your own fumble. So they're going to talk about this when the officials are. But tell you what, you know, you want your return man to be aggressive. But that ball was not only short, but it was spiraling, almost knuckleballing in a, in a sense. And they... Yeah. St. John's ball on the 40. Okay. So, so I guess you can't advance. They're, they're kind of saying you can't advance it. Boy, I almost thought he almost caught that sucker out of the air. But... But just, you know, uh, I just lost the name. Marble trying to be aggressive, which is what you want. You're especially up 14-0. But as it is, just was there a little too late. This is one of those situations where uh, so many people watch the NFL, slightly fewer people watch college football, and don't realize that the high school rules are uh, very unique <laughs> compared to both. And I think uh, this sure. is our, our first episode this season where we're getting a little bit of an education. Well, and I was actually surprised they had called the five-yard face mask. And yep. usually it's pretty much an automatic 15 in high school football. So, so it'll be St. John's football once again in Round Valley territory. This time, though, it's a little bit of a history of being able to move the chains. And the worst part for Marble right there, Derek, is he had to go to the sideline <laughs> after that play. He doesn't, he, does not get, he doesn't get to play defense, so uh, he's going to have to go probably maybe hear a little bit about that situation. Oh, he is free safety. Sorry. Oh, lucky guy. Wilt Bank and Cox come into the backfield. Cox right now with 26 yards on six carries. Wilt Bank from the gun. Cox on his right, kind of running this direction. And this time able to outrun a tackler in the backfield before he turns it upfield. Winds up gaining a few. Well, and you know, the difference right there is he didn't try to get too far outside. He took a much better angle going north-south that time. And St. John's is doing a good job of, by formation, forcing Round Valley's defense to not stack eight in the box. There was only six in the box that time. A little more running room for Will Bank. Second down and seven. Will Bank again with Cox on the right. Bushman going in motion to the left. Handoff Cox right up the middle. Oh, one man away. And it's again Baker who's able to get the stop. No, that was Hill. 
Yeah, sure tackling. I will. I will that is pretty. That's pretty nice to see if you're Round Valley this early in the season to see very sure tackling. Not a lot of broken tackles by the St. John's runners and Cox is tired. And he's been taking, <laughs> well, he's, he's been taking some punishment. That, that was a seventh carry, 29 yards, seven minutes, five seconds. This came up, comes after the muff punt from Round Valley. 14-0 low, the Elk lead with now a third down and five from right over the 35. Cox in the backfield, gets the call, tries to go to the right side, sheds one tackle, he's over the 30, and he's got a comfort fit Dentry first down. <laughs> right on cue, uh, it's the announcer's curse. I talked about how sure Round Valley's tackling has been, and they just missed two right there. But credit Cox, he is definitely tired, but as soon as he gets that ball, you can see him shed two blockers right there. Bushman with a nice block. There's one missed tackle. There's another as Riker Marble went for the legs. And Cox, uh, he's hunched over, though. They're going to have to give it to somebody else here soon. But you remember as we started the drive, well, not really this drive, but I said St. John's needs to run some clock. They've run four minutes. They have it in Round Valley ter territory, exactly what they needed. The winded Cox right now in the backfield alongside Wilt Bank. And he's again getting the call. This time he tries to bounce it to the left side. Gets inside the 25. And for somebody who looks like he's as worn out between plays, as soon as he gets the he football, might, it's just green lights. He might be deking him a little bit. You know, he's he's hunched over in that huddle and looking exhausted. But uh, <laughs> he's got, he's something about when you get that ball, it's like a power pellet. Uh, <laughs> instant energy. 41 yards now on nine carries. And this time he's going to come outside in an empty backfield. One of three receivers coming to the near side, but now it goes yep. in motion right back to Wilt Bank's right. Bushman now in motion again, moving right to left. Wilt Bank drops back, short, looking to throw, pressured. Moves the pocket to the left, looking downfield. Pump fake, tries to get it over the line of scrimmage, and it winds up running toward the far sideline, and it's very wow. close to the yard marker. I mean, that was amazing by Wilpank. I didn't think he saw the pressure coming from the back side. I thought he was going to take a big hit, and instead pulls it down and is able to make something out of nothing. I'm sure he's got a, a, a little word, a little birdie in his ear telling him, hey, we better make sure that our receivers are open before we throw that in. So you could see he wanted to throw it, but after that interception, just not too sure, and he was able to pull it down. He's a great runner, so you might as well stay with your strength. Five minutes, 29 seconds to go. Third and two. Uh, this is St. John's getting, well, no, they are in the red zone. Just might, over the 20. He might keep this one. Nope. Handoff goes Cox, runs over the right side, and Lane Hill makes the stop, but not before he gains the needed three yards and has a comfort fit Dentures first down. I'll tell you what, Kevin Hernandez and Carson Thomas for the Redskins just doing a great job up front on this drive of, of getting movement. They're, they're, they're taking the Round Valley defenders on that front line back at least three, four yards. So that's giving Cox a nice head of steam. So Round Valley about to have their backs up against their own end zone. They're going to have to make a stand. First and 10, five minutes, eight seconds to go. 14 nothing. St. John's trails, but is threatening. Ball's on the 15. Bushman, nope, that's Rabin coming in motion to the near side. Pressure, try to set up a screen, grabbed by Cox. Goes to the far sideline before he is spilled, but gains six yards. Tell you what, Round Valley defenders have already figured out if we're going to bring down Cox immediately, we have to go low. And so we'll see if Cox has it in him to maybe uh, get a little mini hurdle. You can't. In high school football, it's another thing. You can't hurdle anybody, but you could do a big step over, and they probably let it go. Uh, but Cox is going to perhaps need some oxygen at halftime. <laughs> you know, they put him in motion. Don't put him in motion. I mean, that's just going to get him more tired. Uh, but he's just he is uh, right now carrying the load for these St. John's Redskins. He's responsible for the lone reception, also 44 yards. So if given 50 total yards as he's in the backfield again, ball's fumbled. Well... Well, maybe fumble Ruskied. Pretty good play. It might have been a quarterback keeper the whole time because when that ball was snapped, Cox just stood there. <laughs> and so I'm thinking it was going to be Wilt Bank all the way. And they did a great job. The left side of the St. John's offensive line is getting a really nice wall down uh, and able to create some lanes for the St. John's runners. That's going to wind up being a seven-yard run for Wilt Bank. I'm going to meet him halfway and say that was designed. I, I, I think it was designed, but not the fumble part. It's a comfort fit. Dentures first down. First and goal from the five for the Redskins. This drive continued after the muffed punt. Cox back in motion, now standing on Wilt Bank's left. 
Send Raven to the near side. Drop back short. Wilt Bank looking to the end zone. He had a man open, but it throws through his hands. Bushman was the intended receiver, and it falls incomplete. You know, what? the nice thing about that play, Derek, is it was a, a three-step drop throw it. So no pressure. Wilt Bank is going to, you know, throw it, put it in a place where only his guy has a chance to get it. Oh, it was a good and, throw. And he really did a great job, and Bushman almost had it. One thing St. John's has been working on, they didn't do a very good job of it last week, was all the motion. But round by looks like they're just sitting in a zone, so that motion's not doing a whole lot of good. Second and goal from the five. 3.34 to go as this time Cox gets the call, starts right, bounces left. He's very close to the goal line. And it'll be third down. Big tackle there made by Noah Dana, Cody Finch in there as well. Um, this is where it's going to get tough for St. John's because they, they, they don't have as many options. You, you can see we've only seen two or three formations out of the whole night so far and not a lot of variety here. But, you, but the nice thing is Cox has been able to pick up two or three yards whenever he wants. Well, he needs two. Third and goal from oh, the two, and that no. time it is fumbled, but Cox is able to get it back. And I think that might be a sign of fatigue there. Yeah, the snap was a little high, and so it just took Wilt Bank that extra sec. And, and Wilt Bank didn't grab it and, and try to put it in there. He kind of almost tried to touch pass it into Cox's hands, and that didn't work out so well. 2.40 to go. Timeout St. John's. First used here in the first half. 14-0. They're trailing. Going to be looking at a fourth and goal from the three. It's Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. It's a tough game out there. We can help you reach your goals and come out victorious. Need help paying for college? Let the financial aid experts at Northland Pioneer College help you qualify for federal, institutional, or tribal grants. See our website at npc.edu for details. Northland Pioneer College. Expanding minds, transforming lives. At Summit Healthcare you'll find a level of care you might not expect from a rural hospital. We've recently received five stars from CMS, a prestigious ranking that less than 5% of facilities in Arizona earned. Our cancer center has proven its level of advanced care with a national accreditation from the Commission on Cancer. And we continue to add more doctors and services so that you don't have to leave the mountain to find the care you need. At Summit Healthcare, we're elevating care here at home. Hey, White Mountains, it's Joe G from Horn Auto Center on the Deuce and Sholo at Horn. No sign of a kicker going for it. Fourth and goal from the three, trailing two touchdowns. This time in the backfield. Well, they're running away from it. Wilt Bank throwing this one into traffic. It'll be picked off and run out. Cochran's going to come out of the end zone with it and nearly have it taken away from behind. It would have been out at the 20. Instead, it'll be at the 10 after Wilt Bank's second interception. Boy, that's just disheartening for the St. John's Red, Redskins. He just threw it in traffic. He, he uh, panicked a little bit because he was taking some pressure and just threw it in the middle of a sea of white jerseys. He was looking for Cox, I believe. Uh, Bushman was in the area as well. And Bushman almost took it away, but that's that's tough. You had a chance to cut this to one touchdown. Now you got to try to keep Round Valley from scoring here in these last two and a half minutes. Round Valley's offense hasn't been on the field in quite a while after that ground game yeah. from the Redskins. Eight minutes. Here comes Marble, quarterback, 32 yards, six carries. Clark, running back, 55 yards, nine carries, two touchdowns. Got 80, well, no, they're going to call it 90 yards. Uh, if, I, if I'm around, I might go for a big big shot right here. Uh, Marble's got the arm for it. He's got two receivers out to the far side and nearly in the neutral zone, but backing out now, moving the pocket to the right side. Marble looking downfield, winds up, throws this one underneath, caught it to 20, staying on his feet, moving that one over to the 30. He is whiting and gains 20 in a comfort fit. Denture's first down. Uh, Bushman comes up and makes a great hit as whiting tried to get a get a uh, spin on it, but now we have a penalty on the play. I'm not sure unless it's an ineligible downfield. That's a weird place for a penalty. It could be a holding, but I don't know why I would be way down here on the... It's down to the 35 in the middle of the field. Round yeah. Bell already walked it off. Yeah. Personal foul. So maybe, maybe it's a crackback? Late hit, they said. Late hit. So... That's uh, that's helpful for St. John's. 
Did they call timeout, or St. John's just trying to take advantage of the uh, walking off the, the ball, the spot of the foul? So that was thrown at the 35. That should move it back to the 20, if my math is right. That's pretty good. It looks like it's maybe at the 25. I don't know. It's not. It, it can't be from the spot of the foul. It, needs to, it has to be from where the play ended. And you're saying that was at the 35. Well, so the flag was at the 35, so it ended oh. at the 30. So that, that would make more sense. What would it? I don't All know. Right, 10. No, that's 15. Yeah, we also right. can't see very well because we're not No, you're right. It's up. at the 15. So okay, so, so there we go. Yep. So that will make it first down and six after the completion. Well, Round Valley is glad to see a couple different guys make a catch now. Brett Jordan and Trace Whiting. They lost a lot of receivers last year. Same formation with two receivers out wide to the right. Marble, short drop, looking in that direction. Has this one, Luker, caught over the 20. No, then Bushman spins him down. He stays up, is very close to the yard marker, but a flag is out on the near side. And that one came out quick, so we may have some movement up front, uh, but St. John's is bringing a linebacker every time. Sideline warning. So that was uh, thrown against St. John's sideline, I think. Yeah. But anyway, um, St. John's is bringing a linebacker. I, we, we know Round Valley does like to throw the ball around a little bit, so I'm not sure if bringing a linebacker is really the the best idea. I might want to drop those linebackers in covers because right there we saw Round Valley throw it into the flats. No linebackers home. Clock goes under two minutes, 14-0. Round Valley leading, now facing uh, second down and two. After the big gain on the first down play was negated by a 15-yard flag. Now Marble forced to move the pocket. Got to tuck that one. He's got lots of green. Steps around one tackler in the secondary, and then along the far sideline, spins out of bounds at the 40, but winds up gaining 22 yards and has a comfort fit denture first down. I'm not sure... Man, that's a lot of coaches on the Round Valley side. <laughs> I just, we just got a good look at it. Look at all those black shirts. That was a lot of coaches, but bam, Marble showing some experience right there, able to use some shiftiness. I love when guys run slow in the open field because you know, you're know you picking your path and it's causing guys to miss because they're coming at you so hard, it's a lot easier to change directions if you slow it down just a little bit. Round Valley has two timeouts, bear in mind. 94 seconds left here in the half, 14 nothing it leads. Elk sent two receivers now to the near side, Marble. Going to hand off Clark instead. No, he keeps that one, goes to the right, puts his shoulder Man. into a tackler at the 50 and has a comfort fit denture first down. That was a great fake play there by Clark. Fold uh, us up here, I'm sorry, by Marble to Clark. And so Ram Valley going in from, from deep in their own territory, starting to make something happen and great clock management right here as Marble able to get out of bounds and stop the clock. And as you mentioned, two timeouts, that's a that's a ton of time with two timeouts. So just in Round Valley territory. 49 yard line, first and 10, 14 nothing Elk lead. And again, got out of bounds, so the two timeouts preserved as well. Same formation, as now he's gonna move the pocket to the near side, come to the sideline, got a man open at the 40, that's Whiting as he steps out of bounds at the 38, a comfort fit denture first down on the gain of 13. Well, they're gonna say he didn't get out of bounds in time, so they're gonna stop the clock to set the chains, but then they're gonna run the clock here. But I tell you, around by, uh, linebackers not getting where they need to be for St. John's, getting caught in no man's land. They take a step in and then they realize it's a pass and then they're way too late. They got to read the offensive lineman around by a little bit better because they're just getting caught in no man's land. 39 yard line of the Redskins. Now a minute and two seconds left in the half. 14 nothing. Elk lead looking for more. Oh, quick snap. Quick snap there for Marbles. He's looking to the far side. Short hops his man and will fall incomplete. Stop the clock with 54 seconds to go. Well, looking for Luker. Kevin Hernandez got through, and the, the quick snap, I think, might have actually been to the detriment. I'm not sure Round Valley was ready for that. And Hernandez, Johnny on the spot, gets through and able to force Marble to uh, get rid of that a little quicker than he had wanted. Marble's now 5 for 5, 64 yards, though, on that 20-yard pass play. Lost a bunch of them on the 15-yard flag, but he's having quite a half. 64 yards passing, 64 yards on the ground. I don't know who number 44 is for St. John's. He's not on the roster, but 
but we think it might be Johan Springman. So we'll see he's playing in at linebacker. Really late getting to the line of scrimmage Time here, out. and I think Round Valley needs a timeout. Let's keep it here and have another quick talk about the Ace Hardware keys to the game. Ace Hardware has a 24-7 locksmith. The next time you are locked out of your car or just need a key replaced any hour of the day or night, any night of the week, call Ace Hardware in Pine Top, Overgard, and Cholo. You talked about Bushman on the St. John side, yeah. but now that you've seen a half of football from Round Valley, what do you think is the biggest key for the Elk? Well, what I what I kind of thought, you know, finding out that Marble didn't play last week at quarterback, I don't know if there was what was going on over there, if there was any kind of controversy, but I think getting him going. Uh, we know Round Valley, their culture is to throw the ball around. And so giving Marble a little confidence, you know, they, they've been doing it on the ground mostly, but now we've seen them start to open it up a little bit. Marble's getting it done with his legs, getting it done with the arm. And so I think in order for Round Valley to feel like they can be competitive in this 3A, he's going to be a key factor. And so getting him going, I think, is one of the keys to tonight's game for the Round Valley. So often the Round Valley seasons, they started off in the first five games so hot, and then the injuries kind of take their toll. Then they get into the playoffs and don't seem as if they have the same personnel as they had in right. the early start. Do you think keeping it on the ground might do something to kind of preserve some well, of their athletes? Might, except for the running backs. <laughs> <laughs> Man coming in motion to the near side is Luker. Started turning that one up a little bit too soon, but instead Marble's going to be brought down in the backfield. Keep an eye on the flag, though I'm certain that this is going to be a procedure penalty against yeah. Round Valley. Yeah, he, he moved up a little, little too quick, did Luker. But I tell you, that's a coverage sack. So great job on the back side. Round Valley wanted to go deep, and so they had no receivers underneath. That takes a long time to develop. It's covered. Marble has to has to eat it and able to get the sack that way. So St. John's, you know, has some good things to talk about at halftime. Uh, they got some things they need to fix at halftime, but at least it's not. It, there's there's still hope, and that's a big thing for high school kids when you go into the locker room at half. St. John's elects to take the sack wisely. Makes it third and 15 after the loss of seven for Marble. Still have a timeout, 43 seconds and the clock moving. 14 nothing, Round Valley leading. Had pushed this one all the way down to the 38. And now running behind schedule as they drop this one off. Go to throw this one with Jordan connecting that one to Marble. Squirts through a few tacklers at the 30 and then gets to the sideline. Has a comfort fit denture first down on the gain of 25. Well, that's a little uh, New Orleans Saints action there running the Wildcat. They bring Jordan in at quarterback who played last year and that ball was going to Marble all the way. And you can see the athleticism that he has came back did a great job very hard to teach this to high school receivers did a great job of coming back to the ball kept cutting off the defenders who kind of sat and waited for it and that allowed him to make that completion 26 seconds left round valley still has a timeout jordan still playing quarterback marble center man here on the near side instead throw this one into double coverage clark the intended receiver but it falls incomplete might have been a little greedy yeah definitely because uh i forgot the name already uh, side Lindsay was just sitting back there playing center field. I'm not sure if they saw him, but luckily for Rambai, that ball was overthrown, overthrew everybody, or else the St. John's might have been able to stop this drive right, right now. But interesting that the obviously this is a package that Ram Valley has, where they're going to bring Jordan in, maybe on uh, as they get near the goal line to run some quarterback. Marble will again be in the middle of nope, nope. Going to put two receivers on either side. Marble. Closest to the line there on the left is instead Jordan rolls away from him, fakes that one, tucks it, goes over the 20, still on his feet as he's trying to get out of bounds well, and gonna... will not do so at the 15, well, or they does are. he? They are, they're stopping the clock. All right. So, but I think Round Valley is going to have to use their last timeout nonetheless. There are seven seconds left. Well, maybe not. Nope. They're gonna. Have, they have one timeout left, correct? I'm, I'm pretty yes, sure. Yes. Yes. So they can. They do have time to run a play and then call timeout. We know Marble has great a great leg, but Round Valley's thinking six right here. I wonder if more than putting Jordan at quarterback, what they're looking to do in these uh, passing situations is get yeah. Marble out at receiver. A absolutely, absolutely. He's 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 great in the open field. So I'm I'm double covering Marble right here if I'm St. John's. Third down and three, but only well now they put time back on there. There's 13 seconds as Jordan this time rolls to the left, Guess looking who? in the back of the end zone for Marble, who Ooh. might have been nudged, but I don't think he was going to be able to come down with that one in play. That was close. They could, but 
just let up enough. Did I believe that was, I think it was Raven back there. And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, Marble had stopped, and Raven just kind of ran into him, put his hands out. But uh, that ball well overthrown. Jordan's got a great arm, just hasn't been able to, to put it on the money very often. Uh, but, yeah, I, again, I'm double covering Marble right here. We got a bracket at one underneath, one over the top. Fourth down. This would be about a 32-yarder. They're gonna go for it. No time. They they have a timeout left, but they're not gonna use it. Oh yeah, they are. <laughs> All right. Well, they got their last one burned. 14 nothing. Could be the final play of the half coming up here with the elk trying to get an extra. This is Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on iTalk1067.com. Hey, White Mountains, it's Joe G from Horn Auto Center on the Deuce and Sholo. At Horn Auto Center, we're proud to offer the best pricing on all of our new inventory. We won't be beat on price. We'll honor any advertised price on a comparably equipped vehicle on any new Chevy, GMC, or Cadillac. It's that simple. Save time, gas, and money while keeping your tax dollars local when you visit Horn Auto Center. Come see us on the Deuce and Sholo where we won't be beat on price. Horn Auto Center, the Chevy and GMC store that saves you more. Round Valley uses its final timeout with six seconds to play in the half, already leading 14-0. Picked off Wilt Bank in the end zone. Uh, now, Coach Baca didn't like what he saw, so he's going to take the three points, I think, or he's going to try to take the Well, they're, they're going to shoot for it. Yeah. So this one being placed down at the 22. It would be a 32-yarder. St. John's has been able to get some pressure in there on the extra point. This one bounced down, but still had. The Jeez. kick is away. It's long enough and good. Yeah, plenty of length. That ball might have been good from 40. Uh, maybe uh, 45, probably. But a great job with the leg of Marble. He's kind of doing it all tonight for a round valley. Makes that 17 nothing after the 32-yard well, field goal. And, you know, we talk about moral victories a lot of times in sports. That's a moral victory, I think, for St. John's. You know, you did get some good yardage offensively. Obviously, you gave it up on downs. I'm mean, sorry, you threw an interception in the end zone. But uh, but you're able to get some positive yards. Now we got to fix the passing game just a little bit, and you make a stand, uh, perhaps aided by the fact that Round Valley brought in a new package and threw Jordan into the backfield. Um, but a good time of the year to probably try that if you're Round Valley. See, see if you can make something happen with Jordan uh, and put Marble in there as a receiver. Wilt Bank and Bushman are going to come back and receive the Northland Pioneer College kickoff. Two seconds left, 17 like nothing. Redskins like trailing and will hit the football to start the second half. Bushman, Could I think, be is back and Wilt Bank, yeah. Surprised. Well, now, okay, here, here we can conduct a bit of an experiment. The wind is not blowing nearly as aggressively for Marble. Nope. But I would imagine that he's going to... Uh, Kick try, a grounder here. Yeah, try to get it to somebody up front. All right, he's on the approach, and it is. Woof, that's a hot grounder. Going to take a high bounce. Bushman has that one carry him off of his shoulder pad, so the clock at zeros. This will be how it ends. Looking for some blocking help. Instead, tripped up at the 20. That is how the first half ends, with Round Valley taking a 17-0 lead into the locker room. We will begin the horn Nope, 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 nope. The uh, Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport Halftime Show right after this. Elk lead 17-0 on Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. Since 2006, Beeler Orthodontics has been creating spectacular smiles in the White Mountains. Dr. Beeler and his team use innovative technology and cutting-edge orthodontics while still providing a hometown experience. From traditional braces and clear aligners to surgical orthodontics, Dr. Beeler works with smiles of all ages. So call them today to schedule a complimentary exam at 928-537-7775 or visit them at BeelerOrtho.com. Beeler Orthodontics. Live to smile, love your smile. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right, not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford I'm car, good, van, you. or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce and at SholoFord.com. 
Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent now has three locations to serve you. Snowflake, Lakeside, and now Sholo. And with over 85 years combined experience in auto glass and over 40 years of combined experience in window tent, you can trust the experts at Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent with your vehicle. Call them today. Just call 536-597-2 Mountain Mobile Auto Glass Cash Back to you. You've been there, waiting forever at the gas station for the guy to free up so he can fill up your propane tank. Or worse, when the only qualified propane technician decided to stay home that day. Yep, you've been there and I have too. That's why now I get my propane from Ace Hardware every time. You get Ace Hardware's world-famous customer service when you stop in for propane. That's right, you get in, you get out, and you get a great deal on propane and everything else. From Ace Hardware at their locations in Pine Top and Heber. Ace Hardware is proud to support White Mountain Sports. Hi, I'm Dr. Arno. I might not be comfortable on the basketball court, but I promise, at Comfort Fit Dentures, you'll feel comfortable, always. Comfort Fit Dentures has dentures starting at $499 with payment plans, and they have two labs, meaning you get your dentures in days instead of weeks. Call Comfort Fit Dentures today to schedule a free exam and x-ray. 928-888-0002. 928-888-0002. When you think glass, think Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. Deemer's Glass offers the best selection of quality glass with affordable prices. They do full home window packages, replacement windows, custom shower doors and enclosures, custom mirrors in many shapes, styles, and colors, glass doors and hardware, commercial glass for buildings and offices, skylights, screens, fire-rated glass for your fireplace or stove, window film, and more. Visit Deemer's Glass today on Porter Mountain Road in Lakeside or call 1-888-GLASSMAN. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right, not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the Deuce and at SholoFord.com. Want to go fishing? Head to Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. They have fishing supplies, outdoor fishing attire, and fishing gear. Plus, all kinds of bait, including live worms, flies, and lures. The staff are experienced anglers, and they can advise you on what you need, where to go, and what type of bait the fish are biting on. Plus, pick up your fishing, camping, and boat permits. When you think fishing, think Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. Located on Highway 260, one mile before the casino. It's a tough game out there. We can help you reach your goals and come out victorious. Need help paying for college? Let the financial aid experts at Northland Pioneer College help you qualify for federal, institutional, or tribal grants. See our website at npc.edu for details. Northland Pioneer College. Expanding minds, transforming lives. At Summit Healthcare you'll find a level of care you might not expect from a rural hospital. We recently received five stars from CMS, a prestigious ranking that less than 5% of facilities in Arizona earned. Our cancer center has proven its level of advanced care with a national accreditation from the Commission on Cancer. And we continue to add more doctors and services so that you don't have to leave the mountain to find the care you need. At Summit Healthcare, we're elevating care here at home. For, uh, 17 nothing at halftime, Round Valley with the lead. But I don't know if that tells the whole story, Mike, because St. John's lost uh, one drive on an interception right when it looked like it was starting to figure the ground game out. And then on fourth and goal, had some points that could have gone in any direction but wound up going intercepted and throwing it or going the other way for the Elk. So 17 nothing looks like Round Valley's been firmly in control, but... Do you think that's the necessary the entire story? No, it's not the entire story. They're they're definitely on the plus side of things. They've definitely had their way on the ground offensively, and I think that's something that Round Valley. I mean, St. John's going to have to look to stop. But yeah, I think St. John's has some good things. You know, 
it's a tough situation for the coaching staff because this season is not about beating Round Valley. And so at this point in the season, you're probably ill-advised to throw the ball with with the experience that maybe Will Bing doesn't have and, and things like that. But you, you, you got a whole season, and you have to try to prepare him a little bit more. And I know sometimes coaches like early in the season, we're going to throw it, even though we know it might kill a drive or two, as the case may be here tonight, as Will Banks thrown two, two interceptions. But you got to do that because he's got you got to have some of those pass plays on film so that you can so you can teach the guy in film session and uh, show him what he needs to look at next time. Thing is, though, he's he's a great athlete and he's shown yeah. he's got a really good arm, so you he, can you can understand why it's tantalizing to try to give him the opportunity to know, do so. And that's what you love about competitors, right? I mean, he believes he can make that play. Uh, and it just hasn't worked out because you got good athletes on the other side of the ball as well, and they're making a play on the ball. But but St. John's definitely answered the bell, um, slowing Round Valley down. It wasn't as dominant a performance in the second quarter for Round Valley uh, from the line of scrimmage. This is the Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport Store halftime show. For the best selection of hiking, camping, hunting, and fishing gear, go to Honda Ski and Outdoor Sports north of Pine Top on Highway 260 just before you get to the casino as uh, – Mentioned how the Redskins are going to be taking the kick to start the second half. It's going to be up to Round Valley to figure out how to slow Mark Cox. 46 yeah. yards on 12 carries, and he's been rumbling. And that's the and that's the thing. St. John's has got to try to find somebody else to get involved. Uh, obviously, Cox doing the yeoman's work there of get. I mean, he's got tons of carries. But they, as I mentioned, as one of our Ace Harbor keys to the game, Will Bank. You got to get Will Bank involved. We've seen him have the ability to make some things happen on the few times that he's touched the ball. And so they got to try to get him, whether it be coming out of the backfield, I'm sorry, Michael Bushman, uh, get him out of the backfield, put him in motion into the backfield. The fly sweep, that one's a little tough. They try to run it once, but that's a lot of timing that maybe St. John's hasn't had the luxury of so far this season. But find a way to get the ball in his hands. On the other side of it, Riker Marble, 57 yards rushing. Kyle Clark, 55 yards rushing. Round Valley's passing attack, which now features both Marble and Brett Jordan, have combined to go six for eight for 89 yards. That's, so that, that seems like that's been quite efficient. Do you think that's, again, telling the whole story? Uh, no, I think, and I think part of the reason it's not telling the whole story because I think Coach Bach is doing a little, ex not experimentation, but let's, let's see what we have, right? Because obviously... Um, Marble on the ground, Kyle Clark on the ground is working was working really well. Uh, but they decided to, th to throw the ball a little bit more in the second quarter. They brought Jordan in to throw the ball a little bit more. And it just well, didn't have quite the same success. You know, it's tough to throw the ball in high school football at our level. Um, but, you got again, same same thing. You've got to try it now. It's not just about winning this game. It's about winning the games in the future. Round Valley having to compete in the 3A, they're going to have to have a little more firepower uh, in order to get to the places they want to get to. I saw that last week. They lost to a good Morency team. Uh, I believe the final was 24 to 6. In their first year from 2A. Up yeah. from 2A. That's, yeah. Pretty so that, that's that's a, a good Morency school that uh, the Elk were having a hard time getting into the end zone against. So you see what uh, Blue Ridge is up to. Sholo already uh, with a pretty good, you know, albeit a loss, but a good outcome uh, for the, the showing uh, it's going to be tough. Yeah, I mean, Push Ridge, obviously a, a really good team. As Sholo had a 21-point lead on them, and they lose it to, to Push Ridge in the second half. So a uh, lot of uh, things already taken early shape here in the, in the state for Arizona football. Going to continue. The Honda Ski and Outdoor Sports Store Halftime Show. If you want the best selection of hiking, camping, hunting, and fishing gear, go to Honda Ski and Outdoor Sports north of Pine Top on Highway 260 just before you get to the casino. Halftime at St. John's, 17-0. The uh, Elk are leading the Redskins. This is Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. At Summit Healthcare, you'll find a level of care you might not expect from a rural hospital. We've recently received five stars from CMS, a prestigious ranking that less than 5% of facilities in Arizona earned. Our cancer center has proven its level of advanced care with a national accreditation from the Commission on Cancer. And we continue to add more doctors and services so that you don't have to leave the mountain to find the care you need. At Summit Healthcare, we're elevating care here at home. Interesting. Hey, White Mountains, it's Joe G from Horn Auto really Center on the Deucin Show. At Horn Auto Center, we're proud to offer the best pricing on all of our new inventory. We won't be beat on price. 
will honor any advertised price on a comparably equipped vehicle on any new Chevy, GMC, or Cadillac. It's that simple. Save time, gas, and money while keeping your tax dollars local when you visit Horn Auto Center. Come see us on the Deuce and Sholo where we won't be beat on price. Horn Auto Center, the Chevy and GMC store that saves you more. Since 2006, Beeler Orthodontics has been creating spectacular smiles in the White Mountains. Dr. Beeler and his team use innovative technology and cutting-edge orthodontics while still providing a hometown experience. From traditional braces and clear aligners to surgical orthodontics, Dr. Beeler works with smiles of all ages. So call them today to schedule a complimentary exam at 928-537-7775 or visit them at BeelerOrtho.com. Beeler Orthodontics. Live to smile. Love your smile. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent now has three locations to serve you. Snowflake, Lakeside, and now Sholo. And with over 85 years combined experience in auto glass and over 40 years of combined experience in window tent, you can trust the experts at Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent with your vehicle. Call them today. Just call 536-5972. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass, cash back to you. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right, not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce and at SholoFord.com. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent now has three locations to serve you. Snowflake, Lakeside, and now Sholo. And with over 85 years combined experience in auto glass and over 40 years of combined experience in window tent, you can trust the experts at Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent with your vehicle. Call them today. Just call 536-5972. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass, cash back to you. You've been there, waiting forever at the gas station for the guy to free up so he can fill up your propane tank. Or worse, when the only qualified propane technician decided to stay home that day. Yep, you've been there, and I have too. That's why now I get my propane from Ace Hardware every time. You get Ace Hardware's world-famous customer service when you stop in for propane. That's right, you get in, you get out, and you get a great deal on propane and everything else. From Ace Hardware at their locations in Pine Top and Heber. Ace Hardware is proud to support White Mountain Sports. Hi, I'm Dr. Arno. I might not be comfortable on the basketball court, but I promise, at Comfort Fit Dentures, you'll feel comfortable, always. Comfort Fit Dentures has dentures starting at $499 with payment plans, and they have two labs, meaning you get your dentures in days instead of weeks. Call Comfort Fit Dentures today to schedule a free exam and x-ray. 928-888-0002. 928-888-0002. Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport Halftime Show. 17-0, Round Valley with the lead. For the best selection of hiking, camping, hunting, and fishing gear, go to Honda Ski and Outdoor Sports north of Pine Top on Highway 260 just before you get to the casino. As uh, got to have this conversation briefly, the Horn Auto Center drive of the half. I'm going to go in a little bit of a different direction and suggest that it was St. John's when they had that eight-minute uh, slugfest yeah. that involved the muffed punt right. that didn't get any points, that but helped. that probably prevented Round Valley from really uh, getting this out to a 21-24 nothing yeah, lead. Yeah, Round Valley could have opened it wide. They would have had a great field position. Uh, Round Valley would have, and all the momentum, and St. John's took it and made something happen. As we said, eight minutes off the clock, uh, chewed up about 60 yards, uh, just couldn't get any points out of it, but that was a great drive by St. John's. Also wonder about a Beeler Orthodontics straight line play of the half. Beeler Orthodontics, live to smile, love your smile. I think there you just look at any combination of Clark and Marble. You know, the one pass play from yeah. Marble to Jordan that was wide open. I mean, that, that should have been the play of the game because that should have been six, uh, but just kind of stumbled out of the gate there. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's a tough one. There's been a lot of uh, decent plays. We haven't seen any great ones yet. 17 nothing. 
Round Valley has a lead as we wrap up the Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport Store halftime show. For the best selection of hiking, camping, hunting, and fishing gear, go to Honda Ski and Outdoor Sports north of Pine, to uh, Pine Top on Highway 260. Just before you get to the casino, got the second half starting up. After this, it's Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. When you think glass, think Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. Deemer's Glass offers the best selection of quality glass with affordable prices. They do full home window packages, replacement windows, custom shower doors and enclosures, custom mirrors in many shapes, styles, and colors, glass doors and hardware, commercial glass for buildings and offices, skylights, screens, fire-rated glass for your fireplace or stove, window film, and more. Visit Deemer's Glass today on Porter Mountain Road in Lakeside or call 1-888-GLASSMAN. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right, not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy, Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford, on the east end of the deuce, and at SholoFord.com. Want to go fishing? Head to Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. They have fishing supplies, outdoor fishing attire, and fishing gear. Plus all kinds of bait including live worms, flies, and lures. The staff are experienced anglers and they can advise you on what you need, where to go, and what type of bait the fish are biting on. Plus, pick up your fishing, camping, and boat permits. When you think fishing, think Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. Located on Highway 260, one mile before the casino. It's a tough game out there. We can help you reach your goals and come out victorious. Need help paying for college? Let the financial aid experts at Northland Pioneer College help you qualify for federal, institutional, or tribal grants. See our website at npc.edu for details. Northland Pioneer College, expanding minds, transforming lives. At Summit Healthcare, you'll find a level of care you might not expect from a rural hospital. We've recently received five stars from CMS, a prestigious ranking that less than 5% of facilities in Arizona earned. Our cancer center has proven its level of advanced care with a national accreditation from the Commission on Cancer. And we continue to add more doctors and services so that you don't have to leave the mountain to find the care you need. At Summit Healthcare, we're elevating care here at home. Northland Pioneer College kickoff starts to the second half. 17-0 Round Valley leads. And when you want to go to college, go to Northland Pioneer College. Pay the lowest tuition in the state. Marble already booted one into the end zone yeah, going in this direction. And the wind is back. Unless they try an onside kick, this one's going in the end zone. Got Bushman and Wiltbank back ready to receive. Round Valley, which was huddled up. Ball is teed up. And the Elk are looking to defend a 17-point advantage here at the beginning. Well, Ramba is going to want to get this ball back as quick as possible because they're going to have the win with them for the third quarter. This one a little bit lower. Oh. Bushman takes it with his heels on the goal line. Comes up the near hash, then cuts back to the center of the field at the 20. Oh. Still on his feet, nearly loses the football, but is able to scoop it back up before he falls to the ground at the 23. Cochran there with the stop. You know, I like the mental attitude, though, of this St. John's guy. Bushman could have easily let that go in the end zone. They come out, start on the 20, whatever. But he's like, no, I'm going to go and take this one, see if I can make something happen. Almost. If he was able to hold on to the ball there, I think he could have kept his feet a little longer. So big drive here for, for St. John's because you got to keep the Round Valley offense off the field here with the wind at their back. Mark Cox had 46 yards on 12 carries. He's standing on Wilt Bank's right. Wilt Bank. One for four, six yards, but two interceptions. As Bushman goes in motion right to left, three receivers now on that side. Handed off instead, Cox, a little bit of a hesitation as he gets to the 25 and falls forward for a gain of one. Well, I don't know if it's a conditioning thing or not, but Round Valley able to put five guys up there on the line of scrimmage. They filled hard, got some penetration, never let Cox really get anything going. Uh, so credit Round Valley coming out of the half with some energy on the front. Second down, nine. Had a trio of Elk involved in that one, including Baker, who's made some big plays coming out of the linebacking position. 
St. John's a little bit behind schedule yeah. now as they run a ground and pound so that becomes a little bit of an issue as Wilt Bank this time puts Bushman in motion, flips him the ball. Going to, need to take that one to the far side and returns the corner at the 25 and brought down from behind at the 31. Luker there with the stop. I think that would go down as a passing play. Yeah, I think so. Forward shovel pass, really. I tell you what, that was very, very close to becoming a big play. He had Cox out there blocking on the edge. If they could have stopped one guy, Wilpink did a great job of turning it up field with some energy. And so look for St. John's to come back to that one, uh, especially I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, Cy Lindsay might be out for the game. And so that puts them down a receiver. That's the Summit Regional Medical Center update. Very official. Got your all that you need to get your athlete back in the game is the Redskins now back at the line of scrimmage, third and three. Raven coming in motion, right, uh, left to right. Instead, Wiltbank's in a call his own number, circles wow. away from a couple of different tacklers, and then is able to get some forward momentum over the 35 down to the 37 and have enough for a comfort fit denture first down on the gain of six. Well, Cody Finch did a good job of meeting Wiltbank in the hole, but credit Wiltbank for coming off with a spin move. As Round Valley was pursuing hard here to the wide side of the field, and Wilpink took advantage of that and went against the grain, uh, and it was able to not get it, not allow Finch to get much help to bring him down. Clock goes under 10 minutes to play in the third. 17 nothing. Redskins are trailing, but with the football, first time wilpink has gone under center, as he is going to keep this one, but this time, well, he'll force it out for a two-yard gain, just shy of the 40. That's probably not a battle that St. John's is going to win most of the time. They're a little outsized on that on that front line, and that's really a mono -e mono power on power type play. And that's, like I said, not going to be their thing. I liked it better when they were spreading it out because it wasn't allow Round Valley to, to load up the box against their run plays. Put this on the 39, second down, call it eight. 17 nothing. the Redskins trail. But especially since that second quarter when they had the ball for about eight minutes, this has been a, a much different offensive story. Just haven't been able to get some points to support the claim. So now they're got, they are going to spread out Round Valley. Got two receivers on either side. H-back coming in motion just behind the line. Wilt Bank fakes the option pitch, tries to go to the right side, but he's met by two defenders, Cochran and Luker. Well, those are names that have been called all night. Big hit that time by Luker coming up, filling from his linebacker position. And uh, Wilt Bank maybe. You know, that's a tough play. You, you'd like to see him make that decision just a little bit sooner so he can get a little more momentum going north-south, and I think the hesitation is what killed him on that one. Uh, so now, you know, they have run three minutes off the clock, three and a half, but, boy, if they could pick up another first down here on third and long, problem is now you're throwing it into the wind. Third down, eight. See, so no gain on that play. Again, two receivers on either side. Nobody's coming in motion this time as they fake the handoff. Cox tried to set up a screen. Will Bank flushed as he's moving to the left. Now he's going to be pressured at the oh, line of scrimmage and brought tackle. down. Lane Hill is there with the stop. Big, big tackle in the open field as Will Bank wanted to get rid of that ball early, but it was all covered up. He got away from one, one would, would be tacker, but just couldn't get to the outside. And now St. John's going to have to punt. And not only that, Will Bank coming up limping. Got Oscar Jaramillo is going to come in and kick. Will Bank again, like you just said, late coming off the field. Looks like he's favoring his left leg. Marble back to receive as this one's going into the wind, but it does not matter. Big kick, low, though handled by Marble. Doesn't have much coverage. Still, he's able to split a couple of tacklers and get to the 35 before he's forced back. And that is where the Elk will begin with seven minutes and 29 seconds to play in the third quarter, holding on to a 17-point lead. Allowed one first down, but nothing more. We'll see how it plays out for the rest of the season, but I think you're tempting fate to put your quarterback as your punt returner. Um, you know, you're very exposed out there. He's trying to get to the wall, and when he tried to change directions right there, really kind of took a shot right in the chest. You know, obviously a tough kid, a senior. He's been working hard for this moment. He wants to be out there, but probably going to have to make a little better business decision. He's got 57 yards on the ground. Clark, 55. He's standing on Marble's left. Jordan finished the half at quarterback, but we speculated that was because they wanted Marble out there wide as he fakes the handoff, keeping this one oh, coming nice to the near block. side. Got all sorts of blocking help as he runs to the 40 and then out of bounds right into the St. John's pinch. Sam Winters is able to chase him. I'll tell you what, great block by Connor Luker. 
not quite a crack back, but he came inside and picked off the linebacker, and that allowed Marble to get to the outside. And then he's now then he's picking on some younger guys. Winter's just a sophomore, and uh, just too much speed for Marble on the outside. Winds up being a comfort fit denture first down. As soon as Marble was run out of bounds, the St. John's cheerleaders went bananas. I it was not oh cheer or go oh, to jail oh, is what we are uh, see. seeing from one of St. John's finest. That's those are high stakes. <laughs> Marble from the near hash has Clark on his right. Two receivers also going in that direction as they fake the handoff, looking to throw. Goes underneath and air mills. Luker was the intended man, but that was danger. That was dangerous. Jude Rabin was right there. I think if Rabin would have seen that ball coming, might have had to make a play on it, but he did a good job of going to the receiver. Um, St. John's, if I'm if I'm the defensive coach for St. John's, my, I think my guys are a little too deep. They got to do a little bit. They got to get up a little closer to start on the line of scrimmage so they can make that read and then get out of there. But if, if Round Valley decides they want to run the ball right here, it's going to be an easy five, six yards. Second and 10. Clark yet to get the carry. He's in the backfield on Marble's left. This time, two receivers on the short side coming to the left. As handoff goes Clark, he's got a big hole coming to the left side, runs to the 50, puts his head down still on his feet as he gets some blocking help, run him all the way to the 45, have a comfort fit denture first down after the gain of 12. Well, that's exactly what I just said, Derek. Uh, St. John's got caught not only deep, too deep, but they brought one linebacker, their best player, probably Cox, on a blitz, and he picked the wrong hole. So he, caught, he got caught up inside, and that allowed uh, Clark to get to the outside. Redskins going to take a timeout. Seven minutes and three seconds to play in the third, trailing 17-0. The Elk have it once again in St. John's territory. It's Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. Hey, White Mountains, it's Joe G. from Horn Auto Center on the Deuce and Sholo. At Horn Auto Center, we're proud to offer the best pricing on all of our new inventory. We won't be beat on price. We'll honor any advertised price on a comparably equipped vehicle on any new Chevy, GMC, or Cadillac. It's that simple. Save time, gas, some money while keeping your tax dollars local when you visit Horn Auto Center. Come see us on the Deuce and Sholo where we won't be beat on price. Horn Auto Center, the Chevy and GMC store that saves you more. Since 2006, Beeler Orthodontics has been creating spectacular smiles in the White Mountains. Dr. Beeler and his team use innovative technology and cutting-edge orthodontics while still providing a hometown experience. From traditional braces and clear aligners to surgical orthodontics, Dr. Beeler works with smiles of all ages. So call them today to schedule a complimentary exam at 928-537-7775 or visit them at BeelerOrtho.com. Beeler Orthodontics. Live to smile. Love your smile. After the Redskins used the first timeout, first and 10 for Round Valley from the St. John's 44. Seven minutes, three seconds to go in the third quarter. 17-0 Elk lead and are marching. Two receivers going out to the far side. Kyle Clark, again, the lone man in the backfield with Marble working from the shotgun. Pulls the snap down and hands it off. Clark going to the right side, gets to the 35 and is going to be brought down after a nine-yard gain. Boy, although already you see just a little bit of an adjustment right there by Marble. Took the high snap and got it down into Clark's belly quickly that time. Didn't try to do too much with it. Just got it to him as quick as he could, and it worked out real well. Round Valley had opened up that big hole on the right side. And, and you know, I know Coach Dimbat once wanted to call that timeout to get his defense going, but they did not get much penetration on that last play. Second down and one. So this time sending the two receivers to the left side. Clark, who now has 75 yards on 11 carries, standing on Marble's left. Another high snap, but Marble's going to bring it down, fake the give, try to run this one himself. Armillo is going to stop him shy of the yard marker. We'll gain of one. Well, I tell you, good job by St. John's getting. I think they're kind of keen on Marble a little bit, and that's what's allowed Clark to get big chunks so far in this half, whereas Marble... Not, not quite as much so far, but that's probably a good, good strategy. Take the lesser of two evils, I suppose, if you're St. John's. But I'm assuming this one's going to go to Clark. I, I would imagine they need less than a yard as he is on Marble's right side as well as those two receivers. Third down and one. Now they pull it back. And Marble trying to split a couple of different defenders, but two more are there waiting. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, but nothing more. Cox was there. Well, he... He tried to will his way to the first down because he was like, oh, made a bad decision there, uh, but just could not do it. St. John's right there. Again, I think they're, they're kind of keen on Marble. 
Quick snap perhaps here. Already at the line of scrimmage on fourth down, less than a yard. This time Marble's going to take the high snap and run it himself. Gets a little bit of a shove from Clark. He's wow. still on his feet over the 35. Still on his feet. I beg your pardon. That's the 30 down to the 20. Well, six. He needed a yard. Winds up gaining seven with a little bit of the bush push. Yeah, a little, little Philadelphia Eagles offense right there from the shotgun, though. You don't see that very often. But that's just... Uh, you know, St. John's is going to learn, again, a great film opportunity. Get down. The longer you stay up, the longer they can push you. Put so this one to the 27. Four minutes, 53 seconds to play in the third. 17-0, Round Valley leading. And they're keeping it on the ground. Yeah, great drive so far here for Round Valley. Another high snap. This one given away to Clark as he goes to the left side over the 25, gains four. Well, this is not the way we kind of drew it up for St. John's to start this half. They had a decent drive to start their possession, but now Round Valley has been able to get the ball. They've run their own four minutes off the clock and really has done a great job of mixing it up, throwing some passes, running it with Marble, running it with Clark, and uh, really keeping the St. John's defense on their heels. Clark with 79 yards, Marble 75. They're in the backfield again. This has been exclusively on the ground as there's a pressure coming from behind. Trying to throw this one over the middle where it's going to be grabbed by Luker. Did he hang on? He did. 24 yards out. It's the first passing touchdown for the Elk, and it's a Mountain Mobile auto glass touchdown as well. Well, I'll tell you what, credit Marple. He has not thrown a very accurate ball so far tonight, but that one he just kind of took his time, was confident in the pocket. Luckily, he didn't see the pressure of the guy at his feet on his backside uh, being a lefty and was able to just put that one in just a perfect place over the defender, Wiltbank, there for Rabbi to put six more on the board. And, and I'm sure they're glad to get six through the air. Marble, who does a bit of everything, going to try to make it three for three on points after. Also has a 32-yard field oh. goal. This one, after the awkward snap, that's uh, is not good. That's a kick-the-block play. I've seen that before. 23-0. Oh, and Jordan kind of hobbled coming up. We'll keep an eye on that. 3.50 to go in the third quarter. The Elk have the lead. It's Shola Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right, not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy, Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the Deuce and at SholoFord.com. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent now has three locations to serve you. Snowflake, Lakeside, and now Sholo. And with over 85 years combined experience in auto glass and over 40 years of combined experience in window tent, you can trust the experts at Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent with your vehicle. Call them today. Just call 536-5972. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass. Cash back to you. said no 23 nothing round valley with the lead ready to kick it away here with 350 to go in the third quarter when you're ready to kick off your college education do so at northland pioneer college will pay the lowest tuition in the state wilt bank and bushman thought i might have seen lightning oh nope caden wait yeah wilt bank is probably no it's it's moot yeah wilt bank's probably not he kind of was a little gimpy there so he may yeah, he, but they probably were trying to save him. They probably won't see him on kick return duty the rest of the night. So I don't remember seeing his right calf wrapped it, up that aggressively. It was wrapped okay. uh, to, st to start the half. I think he was kind of favoring his I, left that's what hip. I kind of looked like it was giving him problems, but he's out there. Had been handing off an awful lot to Cox, who's got 47 yards on 13 carries. This time he's going to start off on the right side with two other receivers, five receivers set. Wilt Bank puts Cox in motion, brings him back into the backfield, now from the pistol. Hands it off, gives way, Cox goes over the 20. Hill, first man there. 
it stops him after a two-yard gain. I, I'm not. I'm trying to figure out. I was really trying to study that time. What what exactly is St. John's trying to accomplish by bringing Cox in motion? I mean, I think it's it's become a little apparent when he does that he's going to keep the ball. I mean, he's going to get the ball. So I can only imagine they're trying to set something up, a counter of some kind to that play. He's going to go out in the same spot. Start once again with an empty backfield. Bushman and Rabin have also been coming in motion an awful lot. Instead, it'll again be Cox going back into the pistol formation. Hand out one. There it oh, is. here it, there is. it is. Will Banks going to bring this one to the near side, so the leg looks okay. Gains five. Well, that, and that's exactly what they did. They ran the exact same motion, faked it to Cox, and Will Banks ke uh, kept it. If Bushman could have just got a little bit of a block there, he danced with the defensive back a little too much. So credit. Kyle Clark, I'm sorry, Ry Riker Marble for doing a great job defensively that time, setting up the, the would-be blocker and making that stop and keeping Will Bank from getting a big first down. Now, I have notoriously bad depth perception. Is Cox lining up in the pistol? Is he just off to the right? He's just off to the right, okay. but, but a little behind him as well. Three receivers bunched up here near the sideline on the right. Yeah, okay, got a little bit of a better vantage point. As this time the handoff is again faked. Wilt Bank comes to the near side, has enough for a first down over the 35, and will get pushed down at the 37. A comfort fit denture first down after Kyle Clark eventually brings him down. Well, that motion is doing one thing, and it's bringing that defensive end down into the, towards the, the ball a little bit more, and that's allowing Wilt Bank to get to the outside. A receiver cracking back a little bit, kind of stalking him, and uh, getting some some pin down on the inside, allowing Wilt Bank to get the outside. Credit him for some grittiness if he is banged up a little bit. Two minutes to go in the third. 23-0, Grand Valley leading. There is some lightning coming off uh, toward the other side of the field. I don't know directionally what that would be. As Raven comes in motion, Wilpink tries to Great. set up a screen. Had by Cox, but he is met immediately. Luker. No gain on the play. Well, they were lucky, fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage. Luker has been a, a stalwart on the defensive side of the ball tonight. Just been all every, everywhere. Read that one perfectly. Came up from linebacker position. Um, St. John's scheme did not account for him. They need to bring somebody across his face, force him to go out and coverage, and uh, that might have set up Cox a little bit better that time had they been able to do that. Minute and 15 seconds left in the third. A little bit of a stall there after... Using Wilkbank's legs, it really moved the chains. Now he's got an empty backfield, though Cox quickly in motion back to join him. This time sets up on his left. Man in motion coming up behind the line of scrimmage is Raven, but... Delay a game? Might have taken too long. Yep. Dang, that was right at the snap. Mm. You know, the one good thing for St. John's, though, is they're, they've... If they can get out of this quarter, they've at least li uh, limited round value to having one possession with the wind. Quit. If the wind continues to be a factor. It is blowing, though, gently. Yeah, right now it's not too bad. Cox this time starts in the backfield. Again on the left, Raven in motion. Coming to the near side, turns it upfield. Wilt Bank pressured, rolls to his right, oh. looking for something as he flends this one into traffic. Oh. It's going to be incomplete and well defended there by Whiting. And Bushman, the intended man. Didn't look like anybody on the St. John's sideline thought anybody got there early, though initially it looked like that might have been the case. You know, th there was about to be some contact, but a great job by the defensive back of holding, kind of noticing, oh, hey, this ball's a little overthrown. I don't need to really do anything. Bushman just unable to come down with it. Bushman's just been a, he's the, the passes, the connection has been just a hair off couple of intended passes to him. He's made a great effort for but they've just been out of reach. Ball was pushed back to the 32 after the delay of game. So third and 15. Clock stopped. 29 seconds left in the third. Now run it just to get the half the quarter over. Raven again in motion. Wilt Bank looking to throw. Goes over the middle, but there's nobody home but Marble. Boy, I, I, I'm surprised they didn't call Luker for a defensive holding right there as he took the would-be receiver, Jude Rabin, and just knocked him down well past the line of scrimmage. So I think uh, Round Valley might have got away with one there. Wilt Bank is slowly coming off the field. Yeah, they're going to Amarillo is coming back out to, to punt. Marble's going back to receive, you were saying? 
No, I, yeah, I, I just think that round bag got away from one, but Will Bank, yeah, going to come off the field for this one. Let him rest up a little bit. Good snap. Hammerio kicks it high but short. Away! Get away! Ooh. Nearly with Whiting blocked into it. Instead, it will take a pretty good St. John's bounce and be picked up at the Round Valley 45. 13 seconds left in the third. 23 nothing. The Elk have the lead. Round Valley is going to take a shot right here. I would. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't bring in Brett Jordan at quarterback right here just to just to take a shot down the field. I. I. I mean, I would. I'd send Marble out, put him out in the slot, and maybe a deep post or something. Well, Luker's the only man coming off the sideline. Yeah. So we did see Jordan Hoblin. I do see him over there on the sideline, as a matter of fact. So he's not in on this one. Marble and Clark. It's been that combo that's been doing so much of the damage here for three quarters of football for the Elk. Both sides looking for their first win. Round Valley right now leading, approaching the clubhouse as the handoff goes Clark. He's at midfield. Puts his head down and nearly splits two tacklers. Instead, will settle for an eight-yard gain. Well, that's probably going to do it for the first quarter, but St. John's keep continues to miss on their linebacker blitz, and it's cost them in the run game. That is the end of the third. 23-0 Round Valley leads at Shoulder Forge presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. You've been there waiting forever at the gas station for the guy to free up so he can fill up your propane tank. Or worse, when the only qualified propane technician decided to stay home that day. Yep, you've been there and I have too. That's why now I get my propane from Ace Hardware every time. You get Ace Hardware's world famous customer service when you stop in for propane. That's right, you get in, you get out, and you get a great deal on propane and everything else. From Ace Hardware at their locations in Pine Top and Heber. Ace Hardware is proud to support White Mountain Sports. Hi, I'm Dr. Arno. I might not be comfortable on the basketball court, but I promise at Comfort Fit Dentures, you'll feel comfortable always. Comfort Fit Dentures has dentures starting at $499 with payment plans, and they have two labs, meaning you get your dentures in days instead of weeks. Call Comfort Fit Dentures today to schedule a free exam and x ray. 928 888 0002. 928-888-0002. All right, here to start the fourth quarter. Handoff goes Clark, runs over the left side. He's got enough for a comfort fit denture first down as he goes over the 30, deep into St. John's territory. It took two plays to get there on that. That was a second down and one run. St. John's just ill-prepared for that play. Like They just were not all on the same page. And so uh, they got to do a little better job of getting set, hitting, reading their cues, and getting to that ball carrier. They just got they just got pushed around on that drive. And fatigue could start to rear its ugly head for St. John's right now. I got Clark with 100 yards on uh, 14 carries after that run. Is here's a first and dent play with uh, 11 minutes and 35 seconds left. Again, giving Clark. He's going to again go to the left side. Cut this one up along the far sideline before Hamarillo is going to bring him down, but not before Clark runs for six, maybe seven. You know, we keep calling Jaramillo for making a tackle, but it's seven, eight yards down the field. He's got to do a better job of holding his ground up at the line of scrimmage and uh, uh, forcing, uh, allowing his linebackers to run free. Because right now he's probably just getting in the way of him if he's getting driven off the ball quite that quite that far. Although I guess they do list him as an, as a linebacker. So that was actually an eight-yard game. Clark moves over to the right of Marble. Two receivers going in the other direction on the short side of the field, moving left. Handoff is faked. Marble keeps this one. Sheds a tackler after he gets into the first level. Raven's going to bring him down, but it was either Raven or Bushman who might have got hit with a little bit of a straight arm. There's two players Bush. tangled up in the backfield no, as well. We got a cramp. I ah. think I, I believe that's Kevin Hernandez, and it's got. I think he's got a cramp. Hey, Round Valley, good job. So. Classy move, Round Valley. Oh, he's slow getting up too. Oh boy. Oh, oh yeah, boy. This is uh, here's a Summit Regional Medical Center. Uh, Kevin Hernandez, and he's telling him get away. He's he's like I'm. I think I think he's just I think he's just cramped yeah. up. Yeah. You bit. worry about that when they start fidgeting with the knee brace and they're having a hard time. 
Yeah, that, but it looks like it, it's hey. probably just a, an early season cramping situation. Hopefully, hopefully. But Summit Regional yeah. Medical Center has everything you need to get your athlete back in the game. That was a first down run, another comfort fit denture first down for Clark, who's this time on Marble's left. Two receivers also going in that direction as Marble moves the pocket in that way. Looks underneath where he's got a man caught just beyond the yard marker. That's Whiting, and it's good for 12 yards and a comfort fit denture first down. That might also put Marble at 100 yards. As now hold the phone. Timeout, Time St. John's. St. John's, 10-16 left. 23-0 Round Valley leads and is looking at a first and goal situation right after this at Shola Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. When you think glass, think Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. Deemer's Glass offers the best selection of quality glass with affordable prices. They do full home window packages, replacement windows, custom shower doors and enclosures, custom mirrors in many shapes, styles, and colors, glass doors and hardware, commercial glass for buildings and offices, skylights, screens, fire-rated glass for your fireplace or stove, window film, and more. Visit Deemer's Glass today on Porter Mountain Road in Lakeside or call 1-888-GLASSMAN. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right, not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy, Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the Deuce and at SholoFord.com. After St. John's uses its second timeout, handoff Clark, serpentines up the middle of the defense and into the end zone for a Mountain Mobile Autoglass touchdown. It's getting a little easy here for Round Valley's offense. Yeah, I think uh, fatigue starting to set in for St. John's. We saw that a little bit last week against Blue Ridge. I mean, they, I, I think they're playing better than they did last week against Blue Ridge, but Round Valley's starting to click a little bit on offense and the, and the toll that their linemen, their front five are putting on guys as you can see right there, just no penetration. Nice block up front by Cody Finch. Just neutralized his guy and created that big hole off of his backside. Third touchdown for Clark. 116 yards, though very unofficial, as now I think St. John's was in the neutral zone. Might have been Winters. Not surprised they'd blow that one dead unless, I don't know. But Jordan back into the game to hold at least. Let's see what we got. Now, potentially a 30 nothing lead. Oh, they're going to oh, say... Uh, it's declined. All what? Right. Well, I, I think that uh, the Elk might be looking for an opportunity to work on some snap and hold. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good idea. Okay. Not real fast, but it was at least on target that time. Kick is away and good. 30 to nothing. Round Valley leading. 10 minutes, 10 seconds remaining. It's Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right, not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy, Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the Deuce and at SholoFord.com. Want to go fishing? Head to Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. They have fishing supplies, outdoor fishing attire, and fishing gear. Plus, all kinds of bait, including live worms, flies, and lures. The staff are experienced anglers, and they can advise you on what you need, where to go, and what type of bait the fish are biting on. Plus, pick up your fishing, camping, and boat permits. When you think fishing, think Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. Located on Highway 260, one mile before the casino. Marble in for another kickoff. When it's time to kick off your college education, go to Northern Pioneer College. Pay the lowest tuition in the state. 30 to nothing, Round Valley with the lead after falling to Marenzi at home 24 to 6 last week. We'll do it. As Will Banks back in to receive. Well, there you go. But wow, Marble. Damn. Marble. Into the wind. Well, the wind's kind of shifted. That was a Bushman uh, and Waite once again. Yes, yes. St. John's, both teams 
just seems like, I guess it's just as I get older, the numbers get smaller. Uh, well, it, at least these are nice contrasts. They Bradshaw are. Mountain, please help me out. <laughs> I think St. John's at home. I mean, uh, Snowflake at home isn't that great either. Well, but it, it's, it's not really dark gray with a really dark red. It, it looks like Lines a really right angry in, huh? sky. Wilt Bank, who's been asked to do a little bit more throwing since he came down with a little bit of a leg injury. A little pressure shown as instead handoff goes Cox, tries the right side, but he's brought down after a short game. You know, St. John's, the coaching staff might want to take a look at that and try to catch Round Valley in the blitz. They're, they're bringing a linebacker up, and that time they ran too far to the outside. If they can run right off of him, I think they would have a hole behind that first group of defenders and allow them to pick up a little bit, a few more yards. But, you know, these just basic plays, these basic little zone plays have really worked out pretty well, I think, for St. John's. Cox still in the backfield. Man in motion is Rabin as he starts turning it up, trying to provide some blocking help for Cox. But again, a nice job there by Cochran, especially to get to Cox first. And all of the fatigue that it looked like St. John's yeah. front seven was experiencing doesn't seem to be bothering Round Valley. No, it doesn't. And, and I'm seeing a little bit on the offensive side. Guys not able to sustain blocks. They're getting that initial contact, and then Round Valley is shedding them. And the St. John's offensive linemen are not staying engaged. And so those defensive linemen come off of them and are able to stop uh, Cox. If, if they could engage them a little bit more, Cox might be able to run through some of those tackles and make something happen. I mean, as it is, he's still getting positive yards, but they really need to open up a little bit more running room for him in order to let him get a little more head of steam. St. John's very conservative here. Yeah, they must be ready to call their last timeout. 8.40 left. And there it is, the last one that the Redskins have to offer. Comes with 8.39 to play, 30 to nothing. Round Valley with the lead here late. It's Shola Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. It's a tough game out there. We can help you reach your goals and come out victorious. Need help paying for college? Let the financial aid experts at Northland Pioneer College help you qualify for federal, institutional, or tribal grants. See our website at npc.edu for details. Northland Pioneer College. Expanding minds, transforming lives. At Summit Healthcare, you'll find a level of care you might not expect from a rural hospital. We've recently received five stars from CMS, a prestigious ranking that less than 5% of facilities in Arizona earned. Our cancer center has proven its level of advanced care with a national accreditation from the Commission on Cancer. And we continue to add more doctors and services so that you don't have to leave the mountain to find the care you need. At Summit Healthcare, we're elevating care here at home. Redskins need four yards here. Third down play. Coming on their own 25-yard line. They're trailing 30 to nothing. As they had a couple of good drives in the first half. One of them, though, ended with an interception. Oh. Is that one? It looked like it was timed well, but thrown a little bit low. But now they say that Bushman never came down with it. Huh, interesting. Looked like he had it pretty well, but I was just disappointed that Wilbank didn't throw that in a little better spot where... Bushman could run with it. I think he would have easily had the first down. And now, you know, I think if you're St. John's, you, I don't know why you're putting it here. I, I don't think Rambai is going to do any kind of running up the score or anything. But they don't. Uh, you know, this well, is a good, now they are getting in formation. Yeah, this is a good opportunity to run. Try, try a fourth down play. Oh, oh and a high snap. There you go. He's going to be able to get down, and now thinks about running oh, with it. it. Instead, he's going to be. Oh no, he fumbles that one into the end zone. And, oh, it's still loose. But eventually fallen on there by one of the Elk, and Jeffrey Cochran. Is it a touchdown now? Well, I know I seem a little prophetic there, telling yes. them they should have gone for it, but I mean, that's just, that just happens. And you got a guy back there in uh, Harmio who's not used to handling the ball as a receiver, and that ball just a little, a little high, and then he didn't know. He probably had time to kick it. He just didn't know it. Somebody, uh, was that Luker, put his face mask right on that football? I think it was Lane Hill. Was it number eight? I, I, I don't, I couldn't see. 
the, the number was getting all bunched up, but that's what uh, wound up pushing the fumble into the end zone. I wonder why the clock is running. Oh, oh it's 35 a 35 points. nothing lead, so <laughs> second half, that means the clock's going to go. No, no, I clarified. 42 first half, 35, 35 second, second half. half. Yep, that's correct. Yeah. So that makes it 37 to nothing. And the third St. John's turnover. Have all three led to Round Valley points? Yes. Well, I don't know. That was too long ago. For sure two of them did. Yeah, no, they did because the, the, the interception at the end of the first half led to the field led goal. Led to the three points at the so end. That's true. That's 17 points scored off of St. John's turnovers. Yeah, but I will say I, just, I do think St. John's is playing better, um, believe it or not. They're, they're, they kind of have, you know, this. the last five minutes have not gone very well. But before that, I really think they were starting to do some things pretty well. 37 nothing now. I guess the, the bigger question looking forward, as you, you talk about how St. John's is looking well improved after its first game against Blue Ridge, how about Brown Valley and uh, shaking off the... Yeah. Disappointing start of the season to Marinci. You know, and, and say what you want. You can say on paper, Round Valley should win this. But they have executed very well, and it's a rivalry game. You never know what can happen on a rivalry game. And uh, I think Round Valley likes, I, if I'm the coach, I'm liking some of the, a lot of the things I've, I've seen, especially the work that my front five have done in order to create some holes for my running game. Marbles in to kick it away. When it's time to kick off your college education. Go to Northland Pioneer College, play the lowest tuition in the state. Wait and Bushman back to receive on both of them standing on the goal line. This one kicked short, though. Going to skip toward Bushman and carry him off of his shins. He picks that one up, looking for some blocking help. Runs into one of his own men at the 20 and is brought down over the 21. Yeah, just uh, the way things have kind of gone for St. John's here in this second half. I mean... Bushman had some room, but he just couldn't, just ran into his own guy and stopped his momentum. So now it's time, you know, if, if I'm a coach, this is when you kind of get calm because screaming and yelling is not going to do a whole lot of good, and, and we got to focus on the rest of the season, guys. We, with this last five minutes, let's see if we can make something happen and have some positive momentum going into next week's contest. Got some unfamiliar numbers coming in the ballgame on the defensive side for the Elk. That could help. That could help the offense. Well, and I, I think, you know, it's wise as Round Valley takes a timeout with 534 left. 37 nothing the Elk lead. We'll finish that thought right after this. Cholo Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. Hey, White Mountains, it's Joe G from Horn Auto Center on the Deuce and Cholo. At Horn Auto Center, we're proud to offer the best pricing on all of our new inventory. We won't be beat on price. We'll honor any advertised price on a comparably equipped vehicle on any new Chevy, GMC, or Cadillac. It's that simple. Save time, gas, and money while keeping your tax dollars local when you visit Horn Auto Center. Come see us on the Deuce and Cholo where we won't be beat on price. Horn Auto Center, the Chevy and GMC store that saves you more. Since 2006, Beeler Orthodontics has been creating spectacular smiles in the White Mountains. Dr. Beeler and his team use innovative technology and cutting-edge orthodontics while still providing a hometown experience. From traditional braces and clear aligners to surgical orthodontics, Dr. Beeler works with smiles of all ages. So call them today to schedule a complimentary exam at 928-537-7775 or visit them at BeelerOrtho.com. Beeler Orthodontics. Live to smile. Love your smile. After the Elk used the first time out, again, got some new numbers in as Wilt Bank drops back from the shotgun pressure. Starts moving to his right. Now he's going to wind up. Looking downfield where he's got a man. And broke busted coverage. Caught at the 50. And now coming back to the near side. It's Bushman over the 40. And nearly runs through another tackle. Instead will settle for a 40-yard pickup. Is that one? Jonathan Madrid. Touchdown saving. Yeah. Tackle. Boy, and I tell you what, great job by Wilbank to avoid the pressure, get his feet set, and, throw, you know, under threw it a little bit, but it took a long time for that play to develop. And so uh, Bushman just kind of outran the arm of Wilbank, but as you said, busted coverage in, in all kinds of ways. Now, there are an awful lot of familiar numbers out there for the Elk, but there are a few new ones. And as St. John's gets closer, we might see more <laughs> new ones. I mean, old ones. 
Will Bank again looking at the far side and again behind the coverage. This time it's Rabin and he's got it in the end zone. A Mountain Mobile Auto Glass touchdown. The first time that the Redskins are able to punch it in. Comes with four and a half minutes to go and that will also stop the rolling clock. But see, this is why you put in your young guys in a game like this when you're already up 37 uh, nothing. That's Brenton Walker on the coverage, and he made a mistake because he went for the ball. Instead of continuing to go to the receiver and at least try to make a tackle if he does catch it. And so he's going to learn that, and the coaches are going to be able to take that opportunity on film to show everybody, hey, this is what we do, and this is how you get a program to sustain excellence as you get those young guys in there now when the game is out of reach, basically, and they get learning opportunities. But, but credit uh, St. John's. as. We got some problems here. But credit St. John's and Wilping, those were nice yeah. nice passes right there. Obviously he had more time. The rush not quite as good as it has been all night. Yeah. He gave, he gave him a second and then he threw it. Right, yeah. Round Valley trying to ca call a timeout right before the touchdown play. But, hey, kicker getting a chance to get out there. We don't know. This is uh, John Cameron. Uh-oh, fire. Is Wiltbank trying to go for two, running for his life. Picks up a couple of blocks. Now he's going to tuck it in. <laughs> he punches it in. Uh, they ran about 50 yards on that one. Well, that make it 37 to 8. And it brought a big spark to the St. John's faithful that are sitting around us as well. <laughs> hey, good to get. And you know, what did I say, though? Five minutes left. Get some positive momentum going, and they did that. Clock's well, going to continue should, to run. should not be running. Yeah, no, once it hits 35, it Oh, is that it? Is it, that it? Okay. Running. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so clock will continue to run. And now, now if I'm, you know, St. John's doesn't have a lot of bench players anyway, so they can keep their starters out there. And let's try to get a defensive stop. I mean, around by, I'm assuming, is going to try to run this clock out with three and a half minutes, but... St. John's again, get some positive momentum, get some positive plays, allow your guys to, to feel a little bit better going into their contest next week against Holbrook. Now, St. John's uh, go ahead and maybe work on an onside kick? Absolutely. I don't think there's anything wrong with that from a sportsmanship point of view. Oh, <laughs> somebody just took a tee to the head. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> when, when it's time to kick off your college education, do so at Northland Pioneer College. You'll pay the lowest tuition in the state. The first time we've seen Cameron since the first kickoff Open of the ball kickoff. game. Yeah. Soccer player that um, maybe I, is a, a little bit I, more. Uh, I know about that. Inclined to boom. This doesn't look like an onside formation at all. No, it doesn't. Brown Valley seems to be expecting it though. As he approaches nope. and just goes ahead and kicks this one deep. Yeah, nice one, too. This one live. Oopsie. And falling on. Wilson is going to come down in there and get that one. So a long field for Round Valley. Clock continuing to move 215, 37 to 8, the Elk lead. I, um, you know, yeah. I, I wonder, I don't, St. John's, I mean, Round Valley may not have to get a first down. They're going to get 40 sec roughly 40 seconds per play. So they may not have to get a first down. they got to snap it four times and call it good. Now we're looking ahead, got uh, St. John's going to be hosting Holbrook next week. Holbrook forced to play it Saturday yeah. because of the, uh, the official shortage. And then uh, Round Valley going down to Thatcher. To also tell you that tomorrow we'll be bringing you the Snowflake at Cactus ball game. So... Tune in as Clark still out there getting some work. Runs that one to the left side and picks up six. That is a big day for Clark. Three touchdowns and now uh, about 120 yards. And and Marble still in the game. I'm I'm surprised by that, but I'm I'm guessing he's just going to be handing it off the rest of the night. And they don't have a they don't have the play clock where you can see it, so they're probably going to have to rely on some coaching help on that one. They're under a minute and a half. As that was a five-yard gain for Clark, but hold the phone. Okay. They just wanted to avoid the safety, I think. Okay, there we go. They got out from their goal line, and now, now they can kind of take their time. Go ahead and take a knee there. I'm not sure why the clock stopped. Well, I thought that 
Yeah, there goes. I thought uh, one of the Redskins was jumped in the neutral zone, but that still shouldn't have stopped it. No, and I, I think Marble took the snap and nobody else moved. Like they didn't, they didn't really go into a victory formation. They just kind of he just took a knee. So uh, big win here for Round Valley, even up the record at one and one. St. John's falls to zero oh and two. But uh, it seems as if uh, you, you had watched the Blue Ridge game last week, and you think that this is trending in a, a positive direction. For yeah, you know, last week St. John's had a lot of formation problems. They had a lot of false starts, guys just not on the same page. And I feel like it was much, much better. You know, you still have to have players, and, and I think Round Valley just had better players tonight. Um, but I think St. John's is definitely trending in the right direction. That will do it. Going to allow the rest of it to run out as it'll be a 37-8 victory for Round Valley. And big one next week, traveling down to Thatcher. The Eagles uh, lost an awful lot, but they they usually got big dudes. And fast guys. B big and fast. Yes. All right, well, we'll start wrapping it up right after this. It's Show LaFord's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right. Not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce and at SholoFord.com. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent now has three locations to serve you. Snowflake, Lakeside, and now Sholo. And with over 85 years combined experience in auto glass and over 40 years of combined experience in window tent, you can trust the experts at Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent with your vehicle. Call them today. Just call 536-5972. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass. Cash back to you. You've been there, waiting forever at the gas station for the guy to free up so he can fill up your propane tank. Or worse, when the only qualified propane technician decided to stay home that day. Yep, you've been there and I have too. That's why now I get my propane from Ace Hardware every time. You get Ace Hardware's world famous customer service when you stop in for propane. That's right, you get in, you get out, and you get a great deal on propane and everything else. From Ace Hardware at their locations in Pine Top and Heber. Ace Hardware is proud to support White Mountain Sports. What do, what do we want to do? 38-7. Nope. Flip that. 37-8. Round Valley comes to St. John's and gets the win. As uh, we talk about a couple of uh, our matters of housekeeping here, especially the Horn Auto Center drive of the game. What do you like there? Well, it really was that, that big third quarter drive that Round Valley put together, chewed up about five minutes a clock. You know, St. John's had a little bit of something going coming out of the half. They did end up having to punt, but but Round Valley just kind of shut the door at that point and, and put together a nice, long, sustained drive, got seven points, um, and did it methodically. And I think that really – that's really when we saw the fatigue start to happen against St. John's. But it was not just physical. It was mental as well. And credit Round Valley for causing that. So that's the Horn Auto Center drive of the game. Beal Orthodontics straight line play of the game. We had a little bit of fireworks coming in after, but I was curious. So, what is the first thoughts you have for that one? Ooh, that is a really good one. I, I mean, I really think uh, Riker Marble's pass to cap that drive. It was about a 24 yards, 24 yard touchdown pass over the middle, and I thought he one of his be better passes of the night, really. Yeah. Uh, and and so I, I think that's something that they're gonna that Round is gonna try to hang their hat on and uh, focus on that pass and uh, see if they can't get go to that a little more often. A, a good pass from Marble, but a better catch from Connor Luker to Absolutely. get underneath that one and haul it in. So that, that is our Beeler Orthodontics straight line play of the game. Beeler Orthodontics, live to smile, love your smile. Now, I, I, I'm going to start the conversation with this one, the Deemer's Glass glass shattering hit of the game. If you need glass for your home oh. or business, Deemer's Glass and Lakeside is hands down the best place to call when you need quality glass at affordable prices. Call it 1-888-GLASSMAN. I'm looking over at uh, Mark Cox, 
the way that he was rumbling in that first half, I think that he was providing most of the he, glass shattering I, hits. I, I think you're right. He was delivering punishment tonight. You know, last week he didn't get the ball nearly as much, and I think he came out on a mission. Like he, he's like, I'm going to be the guy, and uh, he did. He delivered a lot of shots. Uh, and probably dished out a lot more punishment than he gave, I mean, than he received. So that will be our Deemer's glass, glass shattering hits of the game from Mark Cox. When you need glass for your home or business, call right Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. Hands down the best place to call when you need quality glass at affordable prices. Call 888 Glassman. As we thank all of our sponsors, including Comfort Fidential, Mount Mobile Auto Glass, Honda Ski and Outdoor Sports Store does our halftime show, Northland Pioneer College for sponsoring all of our kickoffs, Horn Auto Center with the drive of the game, Beale Orthodontics, the straight line play of the game, and as aforementioned, Deemer's Glass with the glass shattering hit. Last call here at St. John's High School, 37 8. Round Valley beats the Redskins as this has been Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. Be sure to join us tomorrow, Snowflakes at Cactus. Until then, be safe. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right. Not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce and at SholoFord.com. This has been Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on iTalk 1067 KNKI Pine Top and iTalk1067.com. Brought to you in part by Northland Pioneer College, Ace Hardware of the White Mountains, Beamer's Glass, Wheeler Orthodontics, Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tint, Comfort Fit Ventures, Summit Regional Medical Center, Horn Auto Center, and Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. This broadcast has been a copyrighted production of iTalk 1067 and Country Mountain Airways, a Copernicu communications station. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or use of this broadcast without the expressed written consent of iTalk 1067 or Country Mountain Airways is strictly prohibited. For more information on this game and other games around the region, go to iTalk1067.com.